Good evening and welcome to On the Fable. I'm Dorothy and I'm here with a wonderful group of Christian women to discuss the issues of the day. Much like we did in the old days around the kitchen table when the kids were in school. The call in number is 646 595 4784. If you want to call in with a question or a prayer request, press 1 to raise your hand in the queue. Our contact email is on the table VC at hotmail.com. Now, we may not all agree all of the time, but isn't that half fun? Different perspectives coming from different experiences and learning from each other? Pull up a chair and join us on this most excellent adventure in the reality of Christianity. Let's just see what's on the table tonight. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the program. Um, I called it Let's Talk because that's how we say it in Rhode Island. It's a tour. So we've got Roz here. Hi, Hello. Roz. Hi, Dorothy. And Sally's here. Hi, Sally. Hi, Dorothy. <laughs> so I thought maybe we'd just talk. What do you think? Sounds good. Yes, sounds good. <laughs> sounds very good. Pam's listening too, by the way. She's she's in the background. She's listening. Okay, tell her she should be able to hit that um, Skype button on the show page and join in. Can you see her? Well, she. Can you uh, tell her? Well, no. I she she emailed me and um, she uh, she said that she would be in the background listening. So I don't know if she's going to try to call in, but she said, you know, she, you know, Pam, she'll sit in the background and wait, you know, she'll, you know, if the Lord leads her to say something, she'll, she'll, she'll call in. Oh, if she's listening, I can just tell her, Pam, hit that Skype button. Pam, (laughs) hit the Skype button. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, goodness. Sometimes. So what do you want to talk about? Well, I know we haven't had a show in a while, and I know there have been things going on that I know, like you and I were just discuss, discussing, I am so sick and tired of being lied to, and it's not just in, in doctrine. It's everywhere. And I, I don't know if anybody yeah. else you know, gets annoyed with that. We were talking about, okay, they sell us a nail polish, and... It's supposed to be safe to put on your fingernails, but if you research it a little bit, you find out there's formaldehyde in there. <laughs> Not so safe. And then the makeup no. has carcinogens in it, okay? <laughs> and, you know, the the flour and the bread has glyphosate, you know, the Roundup stuff. And it's just like... And that's causing cancer and, and causing people a lot of problems. And I don't know, maybe I should just stop reading. <laughs> I know what you're it is saying. It's depressing, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's interesting. It really is. Dorothy, actually, uh, a few weeks ago, my son and I, we were looking at videos and we started finding out, you know, all these mysterious things there and you know what you eat or what you drink you thinking okay bottled water is great for you and then you find out that it's not fda regulated so it's more than likely that (laughs) tap water is better for you than bottled water and then it has the the chemicals from the plastic which feminizes (laughs) men and causes breast cancer in women (laughs) isn't it crazy and so what is it called pb I think I'm not sure what it is. BPA? I think it's BPA. Yeah. 
Yeah. BPA, yeah. And so, I mean, ah. just like you said, just finding out. And then we find out the vanilla, really, a lot of vanilla, <laughs> where they put the natural <laughs> vanilla on a package or something. It actually comes from an otter, you know, the bit of an otter or a beaver. <laughs> I hadn't oh, heard that one. Just ruined it for me. Oh. <laughs> So they can put natural face flavor because <laughs> naturally it, it is come from. It is natural, right? <laughs> but they've been doing it for years, back in the fifties, since the fifties. They've yeah. been taking vanilla from there. <laughs> so I was like, who came up? Oh, with that's that? so disgusting. So I thought, you know, I thought about what Paul says that you just you really need to pray for everything because even the people that think that they're eating healthy and that's why you've seen so many people that are stars and that are well off they're even battling cancer because you know we just really need to pray um, that nothing harms us, you know, that what we eat and that exactly. we're mindful of what we're eating, but also that we need to really there's a place of trusting God. <laughs> Even if we eat something poisonous, <laughs> really, I mean, it's, I'm laughing, but it, it is just crazy because I, I was just like, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fixate on this. You know, most of us aren't going to stop eating. So. No, I don't that's think that's so an option. That's so I did find a way to get most of the Roundup off your fruits and vegetables is to um, soak them in a, a vinegar water solution. Yeah. Or baking soda mm-hmm. with water, and for at least yeah. ten minutes, and that gets ninety percent of any pesticide off. So, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's and that's it's, the thing is that I mean, you have to pray over your nail polish now. I mean, really? <laughs> I don't use it. <laughs> you know? no, no. I can just see me in the nail salon praying over the nail polish before she puts it on my fingers. Hold on, <laughs> I need to pray. The yeah, yeah, right. You don't even know what they do. <laughs> you know, those are luxuries. See, we're talking about luxuries. There's so many people that may be in the audience or just in life that don't have that luxury of going to the salon to get their nails done. And so, that's not even a concern to them, but there's so many other, you know, aspects that, you know, like you said, just the nail polish itself. So they go in and purchasing that and it's dangerous for them or, you know, but yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be rude to anybody. Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay, Insane Rod. That. We get you. But it's, um, it's in all, I think it's in all the nail polishes. I think they use it. As a drying mm-hmm. agent, actually. And, like, the makeup yeah. has carcinogens. Um, it's terrible. So it's, like, everywhere you turn. So, see, now I've got a better understanding of that passage in Revelations that talks about destroying those who destroy the earth because they really are making a mess. There they are. Mm. Yeah. And now the health food people are trying to sell cricket powder. I'm not eating cricket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how much protein they have. <laughs> I can see that. Okay. I know that people in other countries, they eat, um, what is it, the crickets and the, what else? It's um, locusts, like yeah, France yeah, locusts. or like mm-hmm. France or something. Actually, we went some. I uh, know. Um, we and my husband, my son and I, we went to a store in uh, Myrtle Beach, and they had like flavored um, crickets and you know grasshoppers and I mean like they had seasoning on them, and he said he had tasted one before because his friend, um, who of uh, a Hispanic origin. They they've eaten them, and um, it's like a, you know, in other countries it's a delicacy. It's a, it's. I mean, it's just you know they eat it, and then people then know, you see like those France, survivor shows. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And the survivor shows, they say, you know, you can if you're camping or you're, <laughs> you need something to eat, you know, eat the insects. 
So it's interesting. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm just saying, I don't think so. Maybe if it was like fried And also, up even in, ew, the nut. Well, you just think of it as popcorn or something. It's something crunchy, no. like snack crunchy. No. Yeah, and where are you going to find a deep fryer in the woods? <laughs> Oh, for goodness sake! Well, the ones that the ones that we saw at the store, they were they were dried or or yeah, fried. I don't know, but yeah, they were they were crunchy and they had seasoning on them. So that's yeah, but yeah, you can't find it in the woods like that. Well, mm-hmm. let's just make sure we have some Lowry seasoning salt. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know what they? Somebody got caught using for protein for animal food, specifically dog mm-hmm. foods. I don't know if they did it with cat food either. Feathers, turkey feathers. Really? Calling it protein. Yes. Mm-hmm. Many dogs have died from that. Oh. Disgusting. Aww. You know, it does say that we're supposed to take care of his animals. Do people forget yes. that? <laughs> Oh, they no. don't you even know, take care of the babies sometimes, anymore. Sometimes I think that, and I don't think it about everybody, but it seems like there's some mad scientists out there, especially with, when you see what's going into food and, you know, you have the um, the 3D food and you have plastic food. I just found out a few weeks ago that a lot of rice that people are eating is plastic. And um, I was like, really? Mm. <laughs> and the only way you can determine if it's plastic is you try to cook it in a, you know, in a skillet without any oil. And the the rice that sticks to the skillet is plastic and the rice that moves is real rice. Or it, um, when you let it soak, if there's certain things float on top then or, you know, and the rice is floating, then you you can tell it's plastic. Um, but a lot of it, you know, a lot of it um, sinks to the bottom. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, how how many years have people been eating rice as a staple and they decide to come up with rice as plastic rice? I mean, it's just. I think that originated think in China. The, the plastic but even, rice. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that does make sense. It would melt on um, plastic meat melts with heat. Um, and, and it doesn't melt, also, you I know, guess, so significantly to where you realize, oh, this is plastic. It just sticks a little bit. And I mean, yeah. it's just it seems like there's just it, there are people out there that are intentionally creating, you know, um, genetically modified or um, you know, just foods that are harmful to people or that's made out of things that you don't even know if you're eating, you know, animal parts or people parts or using them in your makeup or whatever, you know. And so I think sometimes I'm thinking sometimes I'm like, how did they come up with that, you know, to put poisons in antibiotics, you know, how did they come up with, oh, let's use some rat poison and let's use this and let's use that and you just you know, you just think about how the the enemy can give ideas, and you think, and people that are operating in that can think, oh, this is this will help the masses, but it ends up harming them, or even maybe they even know it harms them, but in the long run, they're getting paid. I just wonder what they eat. Like whoever's making it, I wonder what they eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, interesting. I'm sure they don't sit down with a bowl of plastic rice at dinner time. I just found out there's a place in, I think it was North Carolina, that's growing um, genetically modified rice. So you can't even just say, okay, when you go to the grocery, you look up from the origin of where it's from. If it's China, it might be plastic. Um, so not even that's going to work anymore. So, yeah, but they're mm-hmm. putting human... Human, like liver, like they're taking something from the human liver and putting it in there. In that rice, because I read, I read the article. 
Mm-hmm. Crazy. It's you never heard like of that? Like, oh, I can believe it. I can believe it because they're doing it in so many things, whether or not it's things that you're eating or stuff you put on your body. They're just like, okay, how did they decide that they were going to take that from a corpse? You know, and then call, it's almost like they're, you know, like they're um, making people cannibals without people knowing that they're cannibals, you know. Like you're soil not, and cream. Not, well, you know, yeah. That's what they did with the cows. That's where Mad Cow came from, feeding them mm. cow. Yeah. That's great. It's ridiculous. Okay. Sometimes I think it's either they're either demonized or they're so smart they're stupid. You know, because mm-hmm. there are those yeah. people who are that smart. Because I know my my first husband was a genius, and he was friends with these people who were in a think tank, and they were trying to figure out how to make a computer chip for a satellite that wouldn't melt if the whole Earth was involved in a nuclear conflict. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay. So it's who cares if the computer chip? I know, right? That's what I think. <laughs> so they, these people that are so smart. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. So it's probably a combination of demonization and being too smart for your britches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that uh, the scripture says, you know, don't lean into your own understanding. Or it talks about the acts of the flesh. So it just shows, too, that, you know, even without the enemy, people can do some bad things, <laughs> really bad things. The flesh can do some really bad things and think some real bad things. So, yeah. I, I agree. Oh, Pam says it's all about changing DNA. Well, of course, Genesis 6. Yep. I listened to a strange YouTube that Larry sent me. It was a Jewish woman, and she was talking about the gamma rays that are coming through the galaxy. And she mm-hmm. was saying mm-hmm. how those are going to change your DNA. I'm going, what? <laughs> you know, but she thought it was a good thing. So, sounds like Nephilim to me, but hmm. she thought it was angelic. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it was, I couldn't listen to the whole thing because <sighs> some of it got too too much. You know how sometimes it's just too much nonsense, you know, uh-huh. and you try and listen to the core of what they're saying, but it just got to be too much. <clears throat> Oh, I see Pam. So you, Hold on. Pam. Pam. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Hiya. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> so you were in the Pam, same room. Pam, Pam. Kristen, Kristen, Kristen. <laughs> I know. We talk to you every day. <laughs> <laughs> we swap oodles of information. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> it took so you me ages to, to talk about to find the headset. I've tried it room up and I couldn't remember where I'd put it. <laughs> so do you want to talk about two the off? Uh no, I'll let you do that. <laughs> All I know is it's a very bad day for Israel. And yeah. it's, uh, I think Larry and Stuart mentioned it's something about um, the women dress up in white and dance, um, the last yeah. rides and the dance waiting for the bridegroom. So it's, it's really uh, uh, a very important time. Mm-hmm. But I'm, uh, I'm in the middle of um, reading Gods and Thrones, Carl Gallup's 
uh, book. That's really an eye opener. And can you get that on Amazon? Yes, I did. Uh, no, actually, no. But you can get it on Amazon. But um, uh, Richard over here in Manchester, he sent it to me, and because okay. um, he sent me quite a few books, and I think he got them all from um, Tom Horn. And of course, they're a bit pricey for me, and I can't afford them. So he took pity on me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, it is a very good book. I'd recommend everybody get it because it really does um, open your eyes. And the funny thing is, I was reading um, a couple of chapters today, and then I listened to um, uh, Derek and Sharon Gilbert from Sunday's um, study. They're going through Ezekiel. And it, they covered the same thing, and they said the same thing about the bit I'd just been reading. So. Um, it was really interesting. I oh, love I their studies, the way out. they go into the pagan gods and bring all that history through. It just yeah, makes I the, the study so much more interesting. Yeah. Well, it makes more sense, doesn't it? It makes far more it does. sense. I mean, you understand what, what, what the scriptures say about, you know, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. And and it, it's the same thing about all this messing about with our food and why they're wanting to change DNA and why they're wanting to uh, reduce um, uh, uh, the populations um, because they want, to, they want to rule, you see. And we're, we're an unruly lot. Mm-hmm. And they're afraid <laughs> of that. So they want to a manageable level. And they don't re- they don't think we can think for ourselves, and they're getting a bit frustrated and they're panicking. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, over here we've got um, the EU. We're fighting against the EU for um, uh, taking hold of the internet and charging taxation for certain sites. So we're, we're actually um, fighting that at the moment. Yeah, I don't think Theresa May is going to be very helpful. Theresa May wants getting rid of. (laughs) 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 She doesn't represent this nation, put it that way. And neither does uh, the lawyer, and neither does the Home Office uh, guy. They don't represent this country, they represent their own ends. That's right. Which is the New World Order. Mm-hmm. They're, just, they're just puppets. But, you know, I, the thing that keeps that I keep focused on is um, God is in control. And uh, mm-hmm. even those who are in power, they're in power because he's allowed it. And it's for his ends. They think it's for their own ends, but it isn't. It's for his ends. And once you understand that, I think, you know, you 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 really start to see what's what what's what's going off. Because, I mean, you've only got to read Psalm 2, that God holds them in derision. And, um, you know, you can sit there with him and hold them in derision. You know, I so, said, yeah, you think you're getting away with it. You think you're doing all this in secret, but he right. sees in secret. will reward you openly. You're not going to get away with it. Um, I'm hoping you get a Trump over there. I mean, I'm so grateful Father gave us Trump after all these years of praying. I know a lot of Christians here have been praying for the the country. Well, many, many years ago, I had a a, a dream. I don't know whether it was a dream, vision or whatever, but it were were vivid. And um, I've shared it, you know, out and about with quite a few people over the years. And I dreamt. In the dream, I saw um, Great Britain, and I saw a big black cloud come over it, top to bottom, covering Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland, from Scotland down to um, Dover and across. And then I started seeing pinpoints of light popping up here, there, and everywhere. And then all of a sudden, I saw these lights joining together, like dot to dot, And as these joined together, they became a fire. And as the fire grew brighter, the darkness literally disappeared um, off 
off the shores all the way around it until it was completely gone. And I believe that a pinpoint for a light are intercessors for this nation and the, the lights that God's put in this nation. And I mean, we're in a dark place at the moment, but I believe yes. that intercession will bring us out. Yeah. And uh, if there's anybody in England that's, you know, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland that's listening, join in and pray for this nation because this nation needs it. And we need it here as well. We need yeah. to keep praying. Yeah, I've been too. watching a lot on um, intercession. Um, Cindy Jacob and um, Vesta Mangan, uh, Mangan, M-A-N-G-U-N on um, YouTube. And um, they've been talking about they, their videos about the need for warring women and women yeah. that pray violent prayers. Um, and we keep asking God why so much going on in the world. And I had asked the Lord that a, a few weeks ago about something that was happening. And he asked me, were you praying about that? Were you speaking me and asking me what needed to be interceded for so I could go and stop it or so I could intervene in for that person? And I could honestly say at that time in my life I wasn't praying. And so he yes. said, if you pray. You know, that you will, yeah. that God will give us an answer. And so many a times in scriptures, God asked his people, are you praying for the nations? Are you praying for the leaders of the countries? Are you praying for his kingdom to come, his will be done? And many a times we're not, we're, we're conversing, we're talking about it. And it's good, it's good to talk, but it's good to know what God is saying about something as opposed to how we're perceiving it. Absolutely. What we've got to realize is that God is righteous and he's, he will not step in without invitation. Our prayer is that invitation to give him the authority to step in. See, the devil's got authority because he was given that authority uh, mm-hmm. when Adam and Eve fell. So when Jesus came, um, I mean, he was given the authority from yeah. God, because he was here on earth. We had that connection. Um, one of the pastors I, I was under many years ago, he always said the cross is the connection between heaven and earth and between man and God. Just as Moses was the intermediary on earth for God, we're, mm-hmm. we're that intermediary because Jesus went back. But we're that intermediary, and if we're not praying, then his will won't be seen because we're not we're not calling upon his calling upon his help and calling upon his word and his promises. Mm-hmm. But we also have to understand that, that there are certain things that must come to pass and we're like Peter when Jesus says I must go up to Jerusalem and he said, No, mm-hmm. no, no, don't let it be. You see, because we we he didn't see the full picture and right. we've got to see the full picture. And it, it, we're, we're crying out, you know, let's see your kingdom on earth. Well, don't forget what what it says in Revelation <laughs> of what's got to happen before he comes back and does that. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when we start praying that God's will, we have to come before him and say, what's your will in this particular situation? I want to lift, lift this situation up to you now, Lord. Now I'm asking what your will is. If I may, I'll, I'll just give you one example. Um we knew where our will was in this, me and my son. Um, he and his partner split up, and they had two boys. And I used to have the youngest all the time, you know, every weekend. And when they split up, um, she fell out with, with Paul and decided that was it. And she disappeared with the boys and changed the names without permission and disappeared. Well, we hadn't a clue where she'd gone. She just upped and moved. So I said, come on, we'll take it to the Lord. So, you know, we took it to the Lord. And the Lord gave me David in the wilderness. And he'd been out mm-hmm. fighting with his men. And he came back to the camp. And when they all came back, all the, 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 the women and the children and the old people, they'd all gone. They'd been taken. And uh, 
Of course, the men turned on David and said, it's your fault. If we'd been here, we could have saved them, but it's your fault. I mean, David had lost his family as well. So he turned to God, and God told him, to, to, he says, shall we, shall we um, chase after him? And the Lord says, yes, you'll recover all. So off they went, and on the way, they found um, a servant of, of the marauding party. I think it was Am- Amalekite. And he was, he was ill and he was by the wayside. And he said, if you spare my life, I'll show you the way they've gone. So he did. And so David and his mm-hmm. men went and they recovered the wives and the children and, and everyone. Now, mm-hmm. what happened to us was my son was off work and, and he, was, he was ill and he was receiving benefits for being on sick. And we got a letter that his sick was... Stopped and we said, Well, why ain't it, why ain't it been paid in? And he said, Well, you've moved. And we said, No, I haven't. And he said, You are. Mm-hmm. And he says, What address you got down? And they told him address. He says, But I haven't moved. He says, But hang on a minute, I know that address. I'll go up. So he actually um, made sure they got the right address and stopped that payment and it came to the right address. And he went to that address. And it turned out to be the exact house where she'd moved. So we actually found the boys. God moves in mysterious ways. It took us two years before we we fought. We had to fight through courts and everything to be able to see him. Um, Because she told him, she told the boys that we were dead. Um, I mean, they're, they're, they're 14 and 16 now. And when the first started coming it, it were amazing but when you pray and ask God and follow his directions miracles happen yeah and loads mm-hmm. of stories like that loads mm-hmm. See, we know what our will was in that situation <laughs> but we didn't all the way along we asked the Lord we asked the Lord we asked the Lord and that's that's the awesome thing about it is that even though you said you knew what your will was, um, yeah. God will give you the desires of your heart. He just wants us to ask, you know, whatever things you ask in his name, he will do yeah. it. Um, but you persevered in prayer, and so you were like Elijah, you know. And um, yeah. that scripture in James where it says that, you know, fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much, and it does accomplish so much and that's amazing I mean that's yeah. just that testimony is just amazing of God's power yeah. and it shows who you are just even listening to you um, you you are an atmosphere changer and a perception and perspective changer um, because you always you just talking to you the last two times that I've ever um, spoken with you and, and been online um your focus is God and his kingdom and his will and, and the conversation goes that way and you see other things, but he's your focus. And I love that. I mean, I just, I want to meet you. I want to see your face. <laughs> Ooh, she's across the I'm pond. Just all of it. I've just got all goose, <laughs> my goose pimples have got goose pimples. <laughs> you're powerful. I mean, you are, you're powerful. Yeah. And I have to agree with that, Sally. That's that's why I get so anxious when Pam doesn't get to come to the program because she gives so much. But getting back to prayer, I think for a long time, and I'm guilty of this too, the church has not understood prayer. It's It's not just for our own stuff you know, our own lives. It's, it's, we've got to go out and pray for the situation, the culture, other people. Um, I'm probably not explaining this right. But, yeah, I have a little, you know, red rose tea has those little mm-hmm. things in their tea box. I love red rose tea. I They did a Patriot series, and they have a little White House. I have it right here next to me all the time to remind me to pray for the country, for the president, for the leaders. So, But, yeah, that's, I think that, I think it's so important we pray uh, for them. 
Pardon? The misconception of that prayer, it's, 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 it's uh, communication. Yeah. What it yes. is, it's prayer, is communication one with another. It's a two-sided thing. I mean, sometimes I'll get on my face, sometimes I'll get on my knees, sometimes I'll walk around. But it's a constant communication, being in touch, being in communication with God. And when we pour out, I mean, I, I, I would talk about, talk to him about everything. I've always done that. You know, oh, and that rose, lovely, Lord. You know, and I almost feel him coming up outside and having to smell at it with me, you know. Um, <laughs> no, that's so no, gorgeous at night. It's like diamonds. That's when I used to be walking to church four miles there and four miles. Well, it used to feel like 12 miles back because it were all uphill, but... Um, oh the thing, the thing. Well, my husband won't let me have time when I were married. <laughs> so, um, but the thing is, it's communication, communication with him. We can talk to him about anything and everything, and we're not going to surprise him, and we're not going to shock him. Uh, but for the simple reason, he knows what we're thinking before we think it, and what we're going to say before we say it. So, we we, we actually surprise ourselves. But <laughs> you know, when we talk about all different things, I mean. I believe that that's what David did out at Wilderness, King David, mm-hmm. when he was a shepherd. You know, because when you're out in, 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 in fields in the middle of nowhere, um, you do tend to talk like that. You know, you just talk to God. You know it's there. It's everywhere. Yeah. But it is yep. And we do have a question from the chat room. The girls want yeah. to handle this. Okay, I'm not sure how to pronounce the use in a collier tongue. He says, what if you pray to a saint like the Virgin Mary? Does that still count? I'll let you guys handle no. that one. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Jesus is the mediator. Mm. He's a mediator. And we, because we're born again, he's, he's in us and we're seated with him in heavenly places. It's it's there again. It's understanding history and it's understanding the background, and uh, 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 gods and thrones is very very good for that. You understand a lot of the background. I mean, everybody. It's available for everybody, and all they have to do is go to Jesus, because his father said, "This is my beloved son. Hear ye him." Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to to God except through him. He is the only way. And our righteousness is not of ourselves. It is of God. It's what he's conferred upon us. And it's only because of what Jesus did. When God, when God looks on us, he looks at us because we're born again by the Spirit in the spirit in, by the spirit of God, we are covered with the blood of the Lamb, and we are covered by the Lamb, His righteousness and what He did, not by anything we ever did. All we did was come to Him as we were, confess our sins, we repented, and we received Him, Jesus, our Saviour and our Lord. That is the only ground we can stand on. We can't stand on religion. We can't stand on anything else. We can't say we're better than one person or another. Only Jesus is. And that's the only way to come to God. If you want your prayers answering, you have to do it the way God says. And he says, repent, believe my son, hear him. He is the only way. He is the only truth and he is the only life. That Everything else leads on broad path. Good answer, Pam. Anybody else have anything to say on that one? I was just thinking about um, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that talks about um, prayer. And it says um, God gives us instructions. You know, Jesus asked, or his disciples asked him, you know, how do we pray? Um, We always see you go before the Father to pray. So how do we pray? And then he began instructing them how to pray. But not only that, then Paul began um, teaching um, 
God's people how to pray also. And it says, when you pray, come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain, you know, favor um, or help in the time of need. And so there are so many scriptures where, um, where we're instructed on how to pray. And I think um, in regards to developing a relationship, what I want to, I want to be kind about it, but I want to say developing a relationship with God as a father. And so Jesus um, made that transition, helped us make that transition to acknowledging God as not someone that's so distant, but someone that's present, someone that's our daddy, someone that's um, immediately there for us and that provides and, and hears us and that we have relationships with because of him. And so, um, yeah. um, it, it's, um, that is something that as you pray and you're sincerely praying, um, to God, um, that you, that that person would begin asking, you know, father, God, help me to have a relationship with you. Help me to have boldness when I come before you help me to know, my relationship with you. And so um, there's in Jeremiah, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 12, it says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And that's the um, NIV translation. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm more of a King James person, but the scriptures that pull up, it, 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 um, <laughs> are you King James? No, I'm not stuck on King James, but you know, grew up like that. Uh, but uh, there are so many scriptures where where God is just letting us know that if we call on him, it says, um, mm-hmm. in Psalms it says, Psalms one forty five eighteen. it says, the Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who Amen. call on him in truth. Um, and then Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Um, so God just wants us to have a relationship with him. He's constantly, um, trying to talk to us. I I was thinking about that yesterday. Someone said that as you become older in your faith, that, God stopped talking to you as much. It's almost like when a teacher, you know, when you were younger, you were taught, you know, and they would, the teacher would talk to you all the time or direct you. And um, then when you start taking a test, the teacher doesn't talk anymore. But I don't agree with that because the scripture says he'll guide you and and lead you in all truth and um, that he will be a father to you. And uh, even to me, when I see the communication between God and, and man, I, saw, I thought, started thinking about Moses, how Moses even went on to the top of the mountain and God was like, okay, we were talking to each other before, but now I want to show you who I am. I want to show you my faith. I want to show you my backside. I want to show you my glory. I want to show, and then Jer- um, Joshua started going in with Moses and saying, I want to go where you're going. And so he began experiencing the glory of God and began experiencing Mm -hmm. intimacy with God because of where Moses was. And so I don't believe that our relationship with God become more distant as we grow older in our faith, but that God becomes greater and closer and reveals Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. himself. And like you said, sister, um, that you began praying the prayers of God and you began praying the things that God wants spoken here mm-hmm. on the earth and you become his mouthpiece and you began thinking his thoughts. And so it all, it, you become so connected. It's almost uh, like a friendship or a relationship that you're in where you can finish a person's sentence mm-hmm. because you know their mind mm-hmm. and you know their words. And so um, mm-hmm. to that person that's asking about praying to that other person, to Mary as a mediator or to um, for prayers, my encouragement to you would be is to begin asking God 
um, the Father, how can I have a relation, a greater relationship with you? How can I talk to you? Teach me how to talk to you. Teach me how mm-hmm. to pray. That's a common mm-hmm. prayer um, for anybody. How, no matter how long you've been saved, Lord, teach me what to say, how to say it. Teach me. Give mm-hmm. me your heart. And if, you know, there's been times where I've met people that have said, well, I pray to this um, saint for healing. And I think, well, if you pray to Jesus, <laughs> and I will yeah. tell them many times, or either I'll ask them, can I pray for you? And I believe that yeah. if you lay hands on the sick, that they shall recover. Or I believe that if you ask anything according to his will, that it shall be given unto you. And that, you mm-hmm. know, that you can, that that person can ask Jesus um, and the Father yeah. to heal them. And so uh, many right. times it's just a matter of us learning. Um, and mm-hmm. I do, I listen to the Catholic Channel often. Um, they have great teaching on many things. Um, and that's how, you know, the body of Christ, we learn from each other. But my encouragement mm-hmm. is to call up on him and he will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things. God will answer you. Yeah. Well, Jesus said that whatever you ask the Father in my name, yes. he will do it. That he might be glorified. Yes. Yes. See, Jesus is the name above all names. That, that name is so powerful that it isn't until you learn about how powerful it is that, that you, you, you see things happening, you change. You, you just can't, you can't deviate from it. I mean, you, you were talking about, you know, um, let me give you an example, another example. Um, intercession and, and prayer and, and the name of Jesus. Uh I had a nephew, I mean, he's, he's 21 now, but when he was about, oh, about five, I think, I used to have him every weekend. And uh, when, he was, when he was five and he'd started school, his, his uh, grandmother took him um, to the hospital because um, he, he, he wasn't hearing very well. And my sister had rung me up and told me about it, and she says, Apparently, it's 90% deaf in one ear. I'm oh, going to bring him down for you to pray for him. And I went, oh, my God, she'll expect to reply. <laughs> Lord, Lord, you know I can't do it. You know I can't do it. Oh, two days, you know. Oh, Lord, <laughs> you're the healer. I mean, she's going to come down and expect to Nancy, you know, Lord. <laughs> and I'm walking up, oh, Lord. <laughs> anyway, she come down. And um, I just said, oh, Lord, help me. You know, I don't know what to do. And he said, I just heard the Holy Spirit just directing me step by step. And he said, sit him on your knee and explain things to him. So Tom come and sat on my knee. And I said, you know, because he, he, he's had, he's, he, he, I've prayed for him before where he's, where he's had his arms that have been fine. And, you know, he had a, because he hurt his arm and, um, and then he'd, he'd got some lumps coming up on his face, so we prayed about that. And uh, <laughs> because he, he said they were cross, and I said, why, they've gone. And he said, yeah, but I'd got some up here, and I didn't want them to go, you know. But Jesus has took them, so he knew. And um, so I said, you know, Tom, I said, you know that Jesus can't tell a lie, don't you? And he said, yes. I said, you know he loves you, don't you? And he said, yes. And I says, well, your mum told me that you've got a poorly ear. So, you know, Jesus said if we ask him um, to heal it, it will do. And he can't lie. So what do you think he'll do? He says, he'll make it better. I says, right then. I says, well, we've got to pray and ask him. And I'll just do what he tells me to do. And I'll, I'll pray for you. So the Holy Spirit told me to put my hands on his ears. And command those ears to be healed in, in Jesus' name. So I did that. And I said, right now, Tom, what do we say to Jesus for healing you? And he said, thank you, Jesus. And that way, it, it, off he went. And the Holy Spirit said to me, explain to Karen to still make that hospital appointment and go. 
So I says, Karen, the Holy Spirit's told me you've still got to go to hospital with him next week. So off she went to hospital the following week, her and, and Phil, her husband. And uh, Tom wasn't very happy. He says, ah, he says to the doctor, I don't see why I should be here. And the doctor says, why? He says, because Jesus healed me. I don't need to be here. And Karen's laughing and Tom's looking at him. And anyway, the doctor said, hang on a minute. I'll go and get the paperwork. And true enough, it said it was 90% death in that ear. So he did another hearing test on him. And he was completely healed. He, under, he had 100% hearing. And the doctor was so stunned. I mean, the, uh, Tom just turned, I mean, it's about five, six-year-old. It's just, I told you, Jesus, the dirt healed me. I didn't need to be here. And it, the doctor was so stunned, he didn't know what to say. He says, oh, perhaps he had earwax in his ear last week. But we knew better. And Tom told him, who oh, healed him. So when you follow the Lord's instructions, when you take that matter to God, and you pray in Jesus' name, God will honour that name. He will honour his word. I didn't know what yeah. to do, but I mean, we're all glory to him, not me, because I was panicking. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, caller, Tim, have we answered your questions, or you still have more questions? I know he had the question of, he said, in this world, it's easy to lose the way the Pope says he's the voice of the living God on earth. The Coptic Pope says the same. And then we have Protestants, Eastern Orthodox, et cetera, so confusing. Oh, he says they've been answered. Good, because I've been chatting with him yes, in the, yeah. the chat room. So, yes, and I do strongly recommend anyone who's searching out the truth, <clears throat> first to ask him to reveal himself to you. You can even say, if you're really real and you're really the truth, then, you know, please let me know. Um, one of the greatest things to pray is Psalm 119, because it focuses on him leading the way. That's my favorite psalm. And, and I used to pray that all the time. I haven't prayed it in a while, but maybe I should go back to that. Mm-hmm. Did you know that Moses wrote Psalm 119? It's no, right but that makes sense. Or, uh, not, not. I'm sorry. Moses did not write Psalm 119. <laughs> he wrote Psalm 91. I'm sorry, but that that 119 is the scripture um, that I pray often, and I, I go through different sections of 119 because it just it speaks your heart. You know, your desire for God's word and your desire that He would keep you away from sin and um, for justice. There's just so much through 119, and it encompasses the complete alphabet of the Hebrew alphabet. So as you're going through it, you're the, right before each section is a letter of the alphabet. If you have a Bible that's set up that way, it would, and the way it's written is it has um, one of the Hebrew alphabets right before each. So you're going through um it daily, basically, all throughout all the alphabet, you're acknowledging God, and all of the. Uh, it's just it's very beautiful. It's amazing. Right, they call that an acrostic psalm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. In fact, I wrote in uh, the Bible I gave my grandson that that was my favorite psalm. I hope he reads it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, for for several months, that was the psalm that I would read um, as I was going through various problems at work or just life, and I um, mean it, it really um, got me through so many, you know. And then it for me and and for a lot of times when people at church um, ask me what should they read, you know, if they want to pray, learn how to pray, I would tell them to read Psalms one nineteen because um, it guides you through um, prayer, you know, a a prayer that um, David prayed. And so it gives you ideas just in case you forget. 
Mm-hmm. Right. Sorry. We're not always aware that that's what we want to pray until we stumble across yes. it in that psalm. And then, and then you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> yeah. So, Roz, you wanted to talk about two biaf? Did Roz well, I just asleep? wanted to talk about the. No, I, I wanted to talk about what was. Um, what was coming with that, um, you know, with Mars being um, more um, what supposed to be what the same size as the moon? You know, this happens what once every thirty five thousand years. I read. Yeah, and Mars is the war planet. Yeah, it and most if you look down is. through history, you'll notice you'll notice when Mars does things. You know, things do, we do end up with wars. So, yeah. But I don't think we're coming into a war just yet. I just don't. I know everybody is at, like, World War Three is coming. Oh my goodness! And I'm just saying, no, I don't think it's not that. yet. But a lot of people do, and they get all for clam. I think it's the beginning of something, but I don't. I don't think it's that just yet. I mean, I have to agree with you there, but. I mean, you know, it's, it's, we're, I mean, it's, it's so noticeable, you know, just whether time is going so much faster and, you know, just, um, just a lot of, um, signs. I mean, you know, as usual, but I think they're, I think they're going to become more apparent. Things are going to, you know, um, people are going to really start to like, why, why is that happening? Or why is that happening? I mean, it's, things are going to start like out of the usual things are going to start happening. Soon. You mean like volcanoes um, and earthquakes? <laughs> no, that's and weird weather. <laughs> are you serious? No. Oh my that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just that's always been. That's always been. Yes. I'm just talking about other stuff. But it seems like it's you know, accelerating. I'm kind of like, though, yeah. Yes. It, where I was going with especially, it. I just read um, the other day that the, the the volcano is erupting again in Hawaii. Hmm. And uh, yeah. I always thought those volcanoes were long dead, you know, because how many years has, has, have the islands been there? Right. See, I'm not. I'm kind of like. Sorry. Go ahead, Pam. I'm just saying that. Be watching that from beginning. Yeah. Yeah. In a way, uh, it's astonishing. You're I mean, they've never Ireland been active all... in our lifetime. Mm. Uh, There's a lot of tectonic plate um, movement though at the moment. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. And in other countries. Yeah. yeah. There was a, I think in Guatemala, was that in Guatemala? Yeah. Where the, um, yeah. where a whole city is now, it's, 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 um, nobody can move in because of the ash. And so, I mean, I was telling my husband that in my lifetime, I can't remember them saying, you know, this place is no longer inhabitable, but I, I had to have happened in my lifetime because I'm 45. And then, um, but this oh, is the first the time age. in my life when it <laughs> this is the first time in my life where I've seen so much news about weather and the blood moons. Um, I was just telling him about there's supposed to be another blood moon. I think at the end of the month on the 27th. Yes. Um, yeah, Friday. That's what we were talking about. That's to be honest. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, I never in my life have I noticed so much. And then the, the um, even the ocean, the ocean um, lines and the geography has changed, you know. It's just yeah, with all the weather. And so it's mm-hmm. just like, so, and then just to go back to all of this is happening, but then there are more people that are having visitations from the Lord and God revealing himself to them. You know, Muslims, yeah. and people, of, oh yeah, of, you know, atheists. I mean, people are posting their, 
their revelations or their visitation, their their experiences on social media. They're posting it on YouTube, and it's happening more frequently. Yeah. So something is yeah. going on. And if there's not a war, um, a natural war, a lot of Christians are experiencing some intense spiritual warfare. A lot of Christians yeah. are. Um, and so that's what um, uh, I forget what the show is. I don't know if it's InfoWars. It's another show that my husband watches or listens to, a podcast. And he was just saying, they were saying, you think that there's no war going on, but there were Christians, a whole group of Christians that were just recently massacred in, yeah, uh, was that in Africa? And, yeah, um, it was just somewhere. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hundreds were massacred. Yep. And so we might not see natural war, but then that's when we began um, praying and fighting in the spirit and warring in the spirit because there's spiritual warfare. And a lot of Christians are getting sick and a lot of Christians are experiencing And When we're looking at, you know, there's people that are seeing these signs. And like you're saying, they're looking at Mars and they're saying, oh, this is the war, the war uh, symbol. But a lot of people are worshiping and praying to the constellations in the sky. And if we don't start praying more and more intensely, um, then there's there's warfare that we're encountering and we're unaware of it. But they are they are praying. Mm-hmm. I remember when the first when the blood moon started showing um up um more a few years ago. And even when um, Trump came into office, there were a lot of witches and various groups praying against him or praying against Christians. And um, several years ago, when the blood moon started happening, Christians were beginning to believe that, you know, that meant the return of Christ or what have you. Various groups were believing that, and you saw a whole lot of different um, um, messages. I don't know if you all heard them, but... You know, there were so many doomsday messages that yeah. were being preached. And, um, but um, now my my thoughts now are more get ready for something more supernatural <laughs> as opposed to, you know, natural. Occur- I mean, we're seeing the natural occurrences, but things in the supernatural are accelerating even more now. There's a warfare in the mind for 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 believers as well. Oh uh, yeah, and I, I I really believe that what what the what the enemy is doing is um, divide and conquer and and, and um, deviating them from from removing the focus. Yes. And unless mm-hmm. you bring yourself back into focus, you can easily mm-hmm. lose track of where you are. Um, mm-hmm. He is a lion, uh, uh, roar, like like a roaring lion seeking whom he may, he may devour. And mm-hmm. unless you're absolutely focused, and 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 your mind is is fixed on on things above, you mm-hmm. can lose yourself and and you can mm-hmm. fall down. Um, I don't know if you've heard of John Ramirez. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, this testimony about oh. what, when it, when he was a powerful uh, uh, witch, he said mm-hmm. that it were the Christian prayers that stopped him from doing what he wanted. Mm-hmm. And I think his testimony is absolutely amazing. Yeah. You know, and if anybody needed a, a, an encouragement, um, I mean, his testimony is on YouTube and he has written a book. Um, and it should encourage you. We are more powerful um, than, than than what we realize, and, and that's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to get us to think that we're absolutely useless and we're no good. But we're not, and, and, and God tells us that. Says that uh, I mean, we can go boldly, and I always prefer to input the word with great confidence because I think it mm-hmm. it, it, it says more with great confidence than it does with boldness because sometimes people take that boldness and they can, um, they can be a bit cocky, if you know what I mean. Uh, but where is when you co- when you go with great confidence, knowing that God 
uh, listens and that God hears. I think that that gives a, a clearer picture if you understand the meaning. Um, we can we can uh, lift up certain things or you know situations and bring it before the Lord and ask Him to step in. We're in a situation at the moment in the family where. We, I prayed the other night that the Lord would step into this particular situation. Again, it's with the boys. And mm. um, because the youngest was assaulted. And uh, I asked the Lord to step in. And um, I'm confident that he will because after that prayer, I got Job 42. And as far as I'm concerned, it was, it was like when we prayed and asked him and he gave us David and his men in the wilderness. Um, so I've got peace about the situation because I know that, and Paul has, because we've handed it over to God, because we, we could go confidently to God through experiences that we, we've gone through, and so, Lord, we're asking you to step into this situation. What we're doing is we're giving him, him permission, and we're, we're asking him to send, you know, the angels in to protect the boys, and we're asking him to send the warring angels against the evil spirits behind mm. this situation. Yeah. You know, and, and it's important to know that, you know, we've, we've, it is true that greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world. And that we've, mm. got, we've got angelic help, even if we can't mm. see it. it. They're there. My son, Paul, was... was um, Blessed when they were about 10 years old. He saw the angels surrounding our house. He looked through the letterbox and he saw them all. And uh, he said, Mother, Mother. And I said, what? He says, there's somebody walking around our house. There's lots of them. There's two next door, one at either side at door. And I said, what? Is... And he, ex- he told me what he was seeing. And I said, well, that's the angels, Lord. I said, it's the angels of the Lord encompass around those that fear him. What about them two stood next door? And I said, well, they must be the guardian angels of the little girl and the little boy next door. Because the parents were non-believers. But we have got angels assigned to us. Even though we can't see them, they are there. That's funny you said that because I was, I was thinking about that scripture this morning on my way to work. But the angels of the Lord encompass around us that fear him. No, greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the things that the Lord tells us, and it's supposed, I think it's 365 or 366 times written in the Bible, and that is the word fear not. And when you understand why that's there, I think the, the best way to do the best way to show it is I went to see a film uh, oh many years ago called Ghostbusters. Have you heard of that? And I yeah. think it. Yeah, I've I've, I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, you know the one where I'm in New York and there's that pink slime in the underwear, under un, underground. Mm-hmm. Well, the more people oh, yeah. got angry fighting one another, the greater that pink slime got. Mm-hmm. The more hatred and anger and everything there were above, the more that pink slime uh, expanded. Right. And and that, for me, is the mother showed fear, the worse it got. And, mm-hmm. and, and it's like, because it was demonic, and it's like today, the more we show fear, the more... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for now? It's like a smell we give out. The, the smell of fear. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not in the animal world when they're hunting. They can smell fear. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the devil looks for those who are fearful. That's why I believe that when, when, when Joshua took them, I think it was Joshua, took the men to the, to the brook, and the Lord, he, he got all the men, and the, and the Lord says, no, whittle them down. Let them who have got families and all that go back home. And he said, uh, yeah, it went Battle of Jericho. And then he said, let them that are fearful leave and go back home. And uh, so he went down from, a, oh, I, I can't remember the numbers now, say, say a third. 
I said from 900 to, to 300, something like that. And then he told them to go and surround the encampment. And, uh, it was, yeah, it was the Battle of Jericho because it said, put a picture, which I thought was uh, actually um, almost a picture of, of us, a picture and, and, and a torch, and put the, light the torch, put the torch inside the picture. And they had a sword in one hand and they had a picture with a torch inside it. And we're sort of like that now. We're like that surrounding the enemy. We've got the sword in one hand and we've got the picture in the other with a, with a light inside it. And at the word that the Lord gives, the, the, uh, uh, the word Joshua gave, they, they smashed the picture and it showed the torches. You know, when, when the rallying cry went out, it surrounded the whole valley where the enemy was encamped. And they thought they were surrounded by the enemy. And what happened was, they were so so shocked and surprised they went around killing each other. Wow. I mean, I prayed that prayer when I got that what Gulf War. Um, I'll never forget it. And I prayed that prayer that the Lord would send confusion in the enemy during Gulf War. And as it come back, when, when the boys come back and they were telling me, you know, one tale after another... Ah, uh, the, the the air force, the um, the Iraqi air force actually flew over to Iran and gave themselves up. Iran kept the planes. There were mm. men, soldiers, who were going out. And uh, one one of the lads said they were just foreigners in Land Rover, and we went out, and we were doing a recce. He says, and then all of a sudden, thousands of Iraqis stood up. And we thought, oh my God, that our numbers up. So they were ready to take as many as the, the, they could with them uh, because they didn't expect to, to survive. And as they come towards them, they were laying down the, the they were laying down the um, uh, guns of that, and they they took back four men took back thousands of Iraqis who'd surrendered to them back to the camp. And there were tales coming like that out of there. Left, right, and centre, and, and tales of how many people had been saved as well while they were out there. And I, and what I, what had happened was they'd got so confused. The messages weren't getting from the the generals and the lieutenants and that whatever you, down to the Iraqi soldiers. They weren't getting the orders, uh-huh. so everybody was confused, not knowing what to do. Wow! Help us. And I think another thing that helps us not fear is, is really coming into the knowledge that there are more of us than there are of them. Was it um, mm-hmm. that that scripture in, is it, was it Elisha who asked Father to show him into the other realm, into the spiritual realm? Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah, that was Elijah, fighting? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, they were surrounded by Johnny Carson. They'd got three armies coming against them because they were fed up from snitching and, and giving secrets away what they were doing. They thought they'd got a spike camp, and then somebody said, no, it's, it's, it's like Elijah. He keeps telling them what we're doing. So they, all, they said three armies <laughs> after Elijah, which I thought were... I mean, when you read it, it doesn't it don't, it don't really hit you. You know, and then all of a sudden, when you realise they were so desperate, they sent three armies after one man. And you can imagine Gehazi's servant, when he looked up and he saw all these armies surrounding him, how he must have panicked. And Elijah stood there and says, don't worry about it, look. And then he asked God to open his eyes and he saw all the angelic hosts between them and him. But you see, that can only happen when we're, fo- when we're walking in God's will and when we're following God's mm-hmm. will. If we, if we uh, take ourselves out of it, we take ourselves out of that covering. We know that because that's what our nations have done. When they've turned their back on God, what they've done is mm-hmm. they, they, they've invited the enemy in. And that's where we, as believers, must stand in the gap. 
And if you look through scripture down through history, that's what Israel did. It seems like every other generation they turn from yeah. God. Yeah. And yet when they turned back, he was right there. So Yeah. That's what we need to pray for our nations and our governments. If our nations fall, it's because the believers have not done anything. We've been, exactly. we've been, given, we've been given the... We're placed in our nations for the, a time such as this. We're like the... Um, yes, Lord. Um, oh... Yes. I've forgotten the name now. <laughs> ah, pure him. That's <laughs> Esther. We are the Esthers of this time. Esther, yeah. Nations. Yeah. We are the Esthers of this time for our nations. Yeah. Oh, I sure. I and I think Esther. that the, the, the great revelations that we're getting about our authority in the spiritual realm, which affects the physical realm and Mm -hmm. what our job is as far as as citizens of the kingdom what we are actually Mm -hmm. supposed to be doing we're not supposed to be hiding in our caves I mean you can call churches Mm -hmm. their little caves now because that's what they do they just go in and sit on the pews once and once a week but if we come out of that cave and we start interacting with the spiritual realm in our prayer and and warring for our nation, uh, Mm -hmm. things happen. I mean, look at, look at the U S now, look what God is doing. He's revealing Mm -hmm. all those swamp creatures. Yes. He's using Donald Trump, but Donald Trump isn't God, but he's listening to God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all these, and it's terrible, hard to watch. All this corruption is just oozing to the surface. And those mm-hmm. alligators in the swamp are like chomping, you know, they're just trying to catch on to, to stop it. And I think that the spirit of socialism is being exposed for what it is, and it's being mm-hmm. held back right now for a season because we yeah. need to get in that final harvest. And if if people yeah. would realize, if we could get across to people that this stuff that is going on right now is God. It's not Trump. It's not anything else. Or it's not Devin Nunes. It's not they're listening and they're obeying. But it is God who is behind this as an answer to our prayers of many, many years. I mean, I've yeah. been grieving the country at least since Bill Clinton. You know? Mm-hmm. And to see her being turned back to her manifest destiny, to be what she's supposed to be, that shining light on a hill to the world, I'm just so grateful to Father for that. I, just, I don't even know if I can fully explain how grateful I am. Because my heart has been broken all these years. I always say Bill Clinton killed my father, you know, because he said when Bill Clinton got elected, that man is going to be the ruination of this country. And then just before Inauguration Day, he had a heart attack that killed him. And I said, Bill Clinton killed my father. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, what we've been talking about has kept going back to prayer, whether or not it's been what we've been eating, (laughs) what um, (laughs) the weather, Mars, what everything has been um, circling around prayer. And it's really, this is blessing me because I've been studying a lot and listening to various people minister on YouTube about prayer. And, um, and um, what I've found is a lot of people talk about prayer, but rarely do you get to hear people pray. And um, one of the, mm-hmm. the great things that my um, 
assistant pastor says, um, why says um, that people need to hear you pray, and that's how they the disciples learned how to pray from Jesus. Um, mm-hmm. And as uh, even Paul instructed um, believers how to pray, or David, you know, we get to hear him pray in Scripture. But many a times you'll look online and you can't find someone praying. And so um, before we end tonight or before I get off, I would love to hear you all pray, not necessarily you pray to me, but um, so that even those that are listening can pray along with you. And then we're standing in agreement with what you're praying in accordance to God's will, but also Mm -hmm. it teaches others. And many a times we can go back to something. And um, yesterday I asked my sisters, I come from a family of 16. And so um, six of us are girls and we're all on the same um, text line. And I asked my sisters to pray for me about um, work and and, um, direction and what have you. And they sent back these prayers. And immediately I prayed those prayers and I could feel the presence of God. I could feel the download, divine download and instruction, even as they prayed. And I can go back to those prayers and pray them. And so um, I would love to hear you pray, you know, each of you pray uh, for the various concerns as um, as we have time, if, if um, that's okay with you, Torsi. Yeah, how, how much time have you got left to be with us? Um, it's 730, but um, I got another 30 minutes. Actually, I'm sitting here and I'm trying not to do work because I'm trying not to be distracted. I want to hear all the panel stories without being distracted. And so, um, yes, I mean, because it's been powerful just to hear your testimonies and your, you know, how prayer works. It just, it just works. But we don't, it someone just says work. prayer works, but we don't work it. We don't, we don't use <laughs> I the like best, that. We don't use the, one of the greatest tools we have um, for victory. I know. It's so strange you should bring that up because this week, um, I know you know a lot, a little bit about what's going on because you talked to Jameer, I assume. <laughs> um, a little bit. I'm trying to convince my, <laughs> the adopted mother of my grandchildren to pray over the children. And she says, well, I pray mm-hmm. for them every day. I said, yes, that's very good. <laughs> However, it's not the same because when you pray over them, they mm-hmm. can not only agree with you, but they learn how to pray. You know, yeah. but she's mm-hmm. very shy about praying out loud, which I totally understand because I used to never pray out loud because um, I'm shy, believe it or not. <laughs> okay. Oh, anyway. brother. <laughs> I am shy. <laughs> But yeah, is it, I'm I love the way things interweave like that because you know things that I'm addressing in my life get conf- and you know things that Father has told me um, get confirmed all around the place and and that just mm-hmm. um, you know boosts my faith. Yes. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but you know, it is important about- to pray over our children. Yeah, Yeah, it's important to pray over our children. They need to learn how to pray. They need to learn how to hear God's voice. And many a times, um, with coming from a family of 16, my mother, she was a prayer warrior. And um, I say warrior because there were many a times she would call all of us to prayer. And it would be, you know, the newest baby would be in the middle of the bed. And everybody else would be laying around on the floor or, and mom would be on her knees. And for hours, I mean, we would go to sleep and we'd wake up in the middle of the night and mom was still praying. And there were times where God answered prayers like, I mean, like we wouldn't have anything in our cabinets. And then we'd come out of prayer and go downstairs and there would be bags and boxes of food or Amen. dad, God would bless Amen. and cause people to give dad 
you know, hundreds <laughs> of dollars, even though he had worked multiple jobs. But not only that, she prayed health and healing over us. And when she was alive, and she didn't pass until I was in my 30s, um, about 11 years ago. And so um, very few of her children had ever gone to the hospital. I mean, none of us, because she spoke the word, she prayed the word over us, and we, we were in good health. Our doctor was Jesus. And so when my son was born, I was just like, hey, your doctor is Jesus. And we began confessing <laughs> the word and praying. And at five, um, his intestines went into his um, scrotum area, and it became as large as a, of, as a tomato. At five years old, and um, the doctor said, oh, he's going to have to have surgery. And surgery might cause him to be sterile and what have you, but, you know, it has to be done. And I said, no, it's not. And so I came home, and I prayed for my son. And then I told him, I said, well, have your, your auntie pray for you. He said, why? He said, we already prayed for it. And I'm telling you what the doctor says, said were, was irreversible, that his body had created a hole that caused his intestines to start descending. God corrected it, and he has no more mm. no problems at all. He's 16 years old. Doctors had told me that he had asthma issues or bronchial issues, and they would he would have to be on steroids and inhalers. Never did. We prayed. We spoke the word of the Lord. We asked God for instruction, and he told us what to do. Um, had skin issues and different things, different times that the doctor would tell us different things that was happening with him. We'd pray about it, and God healed him of everything. And so now he's 16 years old, and he says to his friends, you need to have my mom pray about that. You know, mm-hmm. and so just to, and then he knows how to pray. And so we sit down together as a family ever since he was young. We would go in and read scripture with them and pray with him. And now um, we have family prayer off and on throughout the week. And he'll come in. And the other day I, we were praying for him a job, and he's been waiting on a job this summer, and it didn't come through. And so I said, well, Joel, let's pray for a job. And his name is Joe El Shaddai, by the way. Um, the Lord is God Almighty, like the one that. who poured forth both natural and spiritual blessings. And so I said, Joel, let's pray. And so uh, he said, down, he's like, what, you want me to pray about a job? And I was like, yeah, we're going to pray about your job and God's direction for your life and what have you. And so I'm praying and I'm praying about, you know, just blessings over him and God's favor because of him being obedient and honoring us and and him being patient and not being a disorderly child and what have you, and um, that God would just bless him. So then he starts praying, and he says, Father God, I ask that you would save souls and cause people to come to know you or cause people to witness to them, and then they become witnesses, and the cycle continues. That was his prayer. And I was just so touched by was like, that was the end of the prayer. He's like, and I thank you for it, Lord. Amen. And, and I was like, my heart just went out. And I was just like, God, he didn't ask you for a job. And I felt like that, you know, Solomon thing where he asked God for the most valuable thing, the most precious thing. And so the Lord put on my heart to give him $100. He said, he said, he asked me for the most important thing. He asked me for the, that my kingdom would come and that people would be, would come to know me. And he said, that's the most important thing. And so um, and then I gave him $100 the next day. I said, you know, this is an offering to your ministry and to your life because you honored God. And he said, really, Mom? I said, you can't earn any any money, (laughs) you know, like God can give. You can't earn the riches and the wealth of pursuing God and, you know, uh, pursuing souls and praying for souls. Um, and the wealth that God will give you because you've made him your reward. And so he was, he's just been really reading and just studying things, and he, he has a heart for mission now. And um, prayer and hearing somebody pray, not only that, many a times when we come together in fellowship at my church, um, hearing other people pray, um, it opens me up, like you said, it, uh, in the Psalms 119, Dorothy, that it opens you up to something that you wouldn't have prayed before. Or sometimes people pray prophetically. They pray that person's concern 
um, and the person, you know, doesn't even know about your situation, but God will lead them to pray for you. And so it's so important mm-hmm. to hear each other pray. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think we're all mulling that one, chewing on that one. That was a good word. But 16 children, that woman should have been given a medal. <laughs> <laughs> Woman and father, mother and father, they're amazing. Blessing, not godly parents. Goodness. Oh, I had one biological, and that was more than enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> A ear can do amazing things. <laughs> There's a scripture in Isaiah that says, and our children will be taught of the Lord, and great shall be their peace. And my mom would quote scripture all the time. She'd say, a soft answer turns away wrath. And she never screamed at us, never screamed at us. All of us have that same wow. thing. My mom never screamed. But and we can never say that she never worked, walked in the spirit. Because, I mean, she was really just dependent on God. And, and walking in, in prayer, she would walk around the house praying all the time. And, um, you know, and just was our friend. That was my best friend. And so, um, and when she went home to be with the Lord, she told us the year before, it's time for me to go. I'm finished my course. I'm finished. It's time for me to go. But prayer and you know, prayer sticks with, it goes to generations to generations. And I I saw my mother pray for us, and we heard her pray for us. And now my brothers are getting saved. I have nieces and nephews. I have a nephew that's a preacher that has given his life to the Lord. He was young when my mom passed. But he just loves God. And it's generationally, you can pray things that over your children and over the country and over nations, that generations to come, you know, you see in Scripture, there are things that are happening now um, because of people who prayed years ago, years ago. And so it is essential, like you were saying, just to pray over our nations and to pray over our leaders, mm-hmm. to pray over our children. Yeah. But also, to, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a commandment to pray for those in authority. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't request it. It's a commandment. And the reason I gave it is just so that things will go well with you. Yep. So you will have a peaceful life. Mm. Yes, indeed. But there's mm. people out there that don't have a peaceful life. And no. they're struggling. You know, they're struggling. They're 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 caught up in drugs or they're caught up in alcohol or they're caught up you know they don't have no offense to a large family i mean i think that's awesome you know um but they don't have that sibling they can turn to they don't have a parent to turn to because maybe they're you know out there um doing the same thing so all they have is just themselves and they think that that's all they have is themselves and my heart really goes out to them. I mean, because they don't know who the Lord is. They don't know who Jesus is. You know, they never met him. They don't know how to get through to him because maybe that drug or, or whatever they're doing is, is that wall between them and God. So they don't know. Yeah. So we're supposed to, you know, help uh, minister to prostitutes and drug dealers and drug users and alcoholics and prisoners um, we're supposed to get that out there as well. They don't. Ha- they mm. might not have that kind about, of background. Are you talking about going out and sitting with the sinners, Ross? What? <laughs> going oh, out and Jesus. sitting with the sinners. <laughs> Dorothy, you know well, there, there's a scriptural context to that. There's, there's a Dorothy. scriptural context for what I just said. Mm-hmm. Ever since I started preparing for Val, I've always had that that heart and wanting to do that. That was one of the main points of even starting. I just I just have a heart for it. They're lonely. They don't they don't know who he is. 
You know, it's just it's it's not something that I really laugh about. I mean, it's 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 it, it's just how do we reach them? A ministry. How that do we it's reach just a them? That I, you know, I I we just we just pray. We get on our knees in war for them. You know, and hope that they get it, just along with everything else that we pray for, or or go out okay, there. That's, that's, you know, talk. Yeah, to that's one thing. That's what I was saying. Family. You know, did not Jesus get accused of sitting with sinners? And he said, "I didn't come for the healthy; I come for the sick." Yes, Dorothy. Mm. Oh, I hate it when she does I'm that. Just saying. <laughs> It's, no, it's, I know, I know. Right. I'm, I'm trying to fine tune what you're saying because you're well, you're trying to say something say. much bigger than what the words coming out of your mouth. That's why I'm trying to help you fine tune it. <sighs> uh, Dorothy, I'm trying to be uh, helpful. Just, I, I'm not saying you're not. It's just that I know what I struggle with, uh, and I'm not druggy. I'm not. I'm, it's just what I went through. My my trauma, and, and there's so many people that just that just they, you know you want to you, you just feel like you can't get to them because there's this wall, and no matter what you do, it, you, you you can't tear it down. But God can tear it down. Father can tear it so down. Large. I can tell you which ones are ready I'm, to hear. Oh my gosh! And you know I know this. Okay, you know I know this. You above all people know that I know that. It's just really hard. So I just keep going back and I just keep I keep praying. I I I still continue to talk to him the way I did, but there's other people out there struggling struggling with the same thing. They've gone through a traumatic experience and they feel like they can't reach him anymore. Yeah. But you still Ron, keep trying. I- you still keep pushing. Can I, Roz, can I ask you, how do you pray for them? I mean, like, could you actually pray with us? Um, Not questioning how you pray, but to say a prayer for those people just in case they're listening. And also so that we can come into agreement with you for that that concern, those prayer, those issues. Sure. I mean, I can can pray. (sighs) You want me to do that now? You don't, do you mind? That'd be great. No, I, I think I was just, you know, I, yeah. Sometimes I get caught up in my own mind. I think it's 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 a battlefield. Your mind is a battlefield. That's what it is. And it's such a, a um, it's it's a war every day, you know. Mm-hmm. So I sometimes I get caught up in it, but. Um, you're my fine. I, I felt head. you. I felt you. <laughs> <laughs> I felt you. I just, but like you were saying, just just your heart for them, and because you have that heart, there there are people that have experiences, and so they're able to intercede and pray on a level, and that I might not be initially be able to yeah. understand. And so mm-hmm. that's why I asked if you would pray about that concerns or those concerns that you mentioned, the, um, the trauma and the, you know, what you pray to God. And, and so we come together in agreement and pray with you. And then there may be somebody that's listening or listening later on that might want to hear that prayer. My, yeah, I mean, I can, I, I can do that. I just, I just feel like I'm gonna break down and cry because I, there's some, I, I, have, I have heard so many people. Just what two days ago, I heard somebody, um, one of my friends, one of my coworkers, you know, or her brother, tried to commit suicide. It's like, why is it that everybody is trying to do this? And it, it just breaks my heart. <laughs> They don't. They don't understand what it does to the people that they leave behind, and then they don't know what their what their eternity is going to be because they're thinking of themselves at that point. And it's just so sad. It's so sad that there's people that they can't. Like, oh, I know what I I want to say, but it's, I, I'm I'm such a Moses and I need an Aaron. That's what it is. Um. It. <laughs> 
it's just heart. It's breaking my heart because it happened to me in my life with someone. So it's like, it's just, and then the guilt that comes along with it. And I talked to Pam about it. This is what I didn't want to happen. It's, there's so many people out there crying for help and they don't know where to go. And then, and then the enemy sees it and he just comes in and he, he just takes their life from them. And then it takes the life of the people that they left behind. And it just, it just hurts. And then we try to stay strong. I mean, at least I do. And I talk to guys, I talk to him all the time. I talk to him all the time. <laughs> I even thank him for the parking space that I get in the front near the store. I mean, I'm always talking to him, but this time, this 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 one thing, it 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 just it rapes you. It takes everything from you, and you try and you try and you try. And it's just... You need to stop trying. You need to stop trying and just let God heal it. There's so many people out there that need help. Yes, they just you need are. somebody to talk to, somebody that will stop and just listen to them. And nobody listens. They just go about their own life because it's, it's about self. Oh, Lord. Pam? Yeah. I know you're hearing. Can you pray for pray for Roz? Not pray yeah. for Roz. We do that anyway. But pray in her stead yeah. for these people. Thank you. Yep. Heavenly Father, we just come before you now and we we'll lift up this heavy burden that Roz is carrying. And Lord, I understand where she's coming from because I've been there. And, Lord, you were my burden carrier at that time. And I ask, Lord, that you will lift this burden even now, Lord, and set her free. And that, Lord, you'll you'll just lead us, Lord, and how to pray for these people, how to help these people. You led me down a path once, some years ago, Lord, to work with these people, with a, a local charity, And, Lord, because I followed your directions, Lord, people were saved, people were delivered, people were healed. And it was so striking that the local church tried to take hold of it, but you wouldn't have it, Lord. And I know, Lord, that when we follow your directions, Lord, we see changes. We just ask, Father, that you will lift this up and remove this burden in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You know, and one of the ways we can help others as we go about our busy lives and we go do our chores, and I know I've said this before, ask Father to lead you to someone who needs something and have him tell you what they need and then provide it, be it prayer, be it healing prayer, be it a hamburger, you ask Father to leave, uh, lead you and keep your eyes open as you're out and and about. And that's how we can change the world. Just be available, be a listening ear. Yep. Even a smile can bless somebody. My, my niece were only asking this the other day and I said, I want so much to help people. She wanted to join police force. And she's got three young uns, and I says, no, that weren't the right way. She says, well, I know the door was shut. I wanted to do this for keep, keep, keep people fit. And that all fell through. And I says, yeah, because you're going about it the wrong way. You're going about it how you think and not how God wants you to. I says, y- y- you've just got to be who you are. And, and, you know, just smile at somebody. Just say hello to somebody that might be lonely and just need a a listening ear, a friendly smile, or whatever. It doesn't have to cost anything. 
doesn't have to cost anything to help somebody. If you see somebody in need. I mean, there was a, a good Samaritan, the story of the good Samaritan that Jesus shared. That, the, you know, the, the religious leaders walked past on the other side of the road when, when the man was laid on the floor, he'd been accosted by local robbers on the way to Jericho from Jerusalem. And the religious leaders looked at him and walked past on the other side of the road. And... Uh, this man came down, he was a Samaritan, and he saw him, and he went and met his needs, and he took him to, to somewhere nearby, and he said to him, send him, and I'll give you the money for the medicines, and then when I come back, if you need any more, I'll give you some more, just look after him. And uh, Jesus said to everybody, who do you think was, was right in this situation? I mean, that's my paraphrase, but... Who do you think was right? Was it the religious leaders that walked straight past? I'm not going to touch anything unclean. Or was it the man who helped the man? And he turned out to be a Samaritan. And if you understood that story, the Samaritans were really hated by the the uh, Hebrew people. But they were shamed because it was a Samaritan that actually did what was right. Got to stop walking past the needy. And it could be anybody needy. It could be anybody with a a, a mum that's struggling, maybe to get on a bus, maybe to 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 pick up some shopping or whatever. Could be a lonely old person. It could be a neighbour. Just reach out and touch him. Watch God move. Just be available for him. Uh, I'll share this story that I'd heard oh many years ago. A woman were in prayer, and she says, Lord, I make myself available for you. What do you want me to do? And it's a true story, and I believe it's from the States. They said, go down to, to Mall. What do you want me to do? He says, go down to Mall, and I'll, I'll tell you when you get there. So she parked up, and she says, now what? He says, go through them doors. So she went through the doors, and she was expecting him to do something amazing, but... I said, no, he said, there was a, a corner where it was was like a set off on one side with benches. And he says, I want you to go and sit on them over there that ben- on that bench. And so she went over to sit on the bench, wondering what he was going to do. And there was a guy on the next bench, leaned over. And then the Lord says to her, right, I want you to go to that wall there and I want you to do an handstand. She went, what? Do an handstand on that wall. All right, Lord. So she did an handstand. And this guy sat there and his jaw dropped. (laughs) And he started crying. And when she came back, he said, why did you do that? She says, God told me to do it. And he says, now I believe there is a God. Mm -hmm. And she says, why? And he showed her he'd got a gun. And they were about to commit suicide. And he said, God, if you're real, get somebody to come and do an handstand. But no matter how ridiculous you might think it is, no matter how ridiculous, just follow what the Lord directs you to do. I like that story. It's a true story. I do hope he never asked me to do a handstand, though, because I don't think I could. Yeah. (laughs) Well, she must have been (laughs) athletic. I think I'd probably end up dropping on my head. (laughs) (laughs) But I know when when I um, helped out, when I helped out in the local um, um, drop-in, it was, uh, it started off where we were taking food because they were feeding homeless and alcoholics and, and addicts and and that. Mm. And then um, we used to take take some food and, and um, help out. And then I got asked if uh, we wanted to go for prayer meetings, you know, on a Wednesday night. I said, yeah. Then they set up a prayer meeting on Friday nights. And, and then I got asked to run that. And I thought, oh, flip, here we go. And Anne said, no, Pam, I want you to run it. So I said, well, I don't run it. I said, all I do is is just turn it over to the Holy Spirit. I said, he's in charge, not me. So she says, oh, well, fair enough, I, you'll do it. 
And, um, you know, they'd go into what they thought were warfare. And there was Satan's name, this and Satan's name. I said, I, I said, stop, 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 stop. I said, we're lifting the name of Jesus, not glorifying Satan. We don't, we don't speak his name. This is Jesus' time. Don't invite him in. So they, all, they didn't realise they were doing it. So I said, we're going into a time of praise now. And, we, um, and that's what we did. And then all of a sudden we said, right, we're going to pray for one another. We would just pray for one another. And uh, <coughs> one, one night we were sat there having a cup of tea before it all started. And we, we'd, we'd, we'd wait until the Holy Spirit sort of led us to pray one for another. And a couple of uh, chaps came to the door. And Sue says, um, sorry, love, we closed. We closed because it was prayer night. And uh, I said, Sue, I said, the Holy Spirit says, let them in. All right, she said, so they both come in. And they were both um, Down syndrome. And it was, uh, oh, it was David, um, I've forgotten the other name now. Michael, that was it, David and Michael. And I think David was the youngest one. And uh, so they came in and they sat with us. I think they'd be in the... 40s by then and um, anyway we were praying and tra- talking to him and then Sue says do you want to be prayed for so David says oh yes and Michael said yes please so we, ex- we explained everything and we, we told him about Jesus and um, so we explained about you know um, being saved being born again and would they receive Jesus? And David said, oh, yes, I love Jesus. I love Je- I invite you, Jesus, into my heart. I invite you to come and take over. And down he went. And he'd got the most beautiful look on his face. Then we prayed for the other one. And um, the, when, when later on, when we got all sat down again for another cup of tea... They, uh, I think it was David, just sat there and he he was glowing. He was literally glowing and smiling. I said, what's happening, David? And he says, well, once I was dark inside, but now I'm all light. And I said, he said, uh, he said do you know Jesus? I know Jesus is here. Jesus is here. The following week, were led to pray for Michael and I were led to put my hands on his ears and command that deafness to go and put my hands on his eyes and command his eyes to be healed. It wasn't until a week after that that I found out that, that he actually wore hearing aids and that he'd been to hospital about um, um, cataracts and the Lord had healed him, he got his ear in back and his eyesight. So we were thrilled. David went on a trip to uh, Florida, to Epcot, and um, to Disney World. And we said, oh, we'll all pray for you that you'll have a safe flight. And they came back. They said, how was it, David? He said, it was lovely. I saw an angel on wing, he says. I saw an angel on wing. He said, I knew we were going to be all right, you know. It was about two or three months after that that we'd heard that David had died. Um, the only thing he ever wanted to know was why his mum and dad didn't want him and put him in the norm. But once he knew Jesus, he just had this most angelic look on his face. I look forward to seeing him. I really do. But that, that, that was the Lord leading us to go to that drop-in. Things changed. So we're getting close to the end of the show. Let's try and um, let's give Sally her desire and we'll all pray. How's that? (laughs) (laughs) Roz, can you do a prayer now? Um, um, Really, Dorothy? You still for Clemps? Yeah. 
I feel embarrassed. <laughs> Don't be. Oh, no. You're Don't. not supposed to feel embarrassed with us. We're your sisters in the Lord. We love yeah. you. No, I just saying. And there's others that feel the same way you feel. So that's a great that's right, A lot of yeah. times we try not to cry, but maybe this this opportunity allowed someone else to say, okay, they know what we're feeling. Many times Christians get on, yeah. you might hear podcasts or many people ministering, and you don't know that that person has gone through the same thing you've gone through. And so just for you to, yeah. to empathize and know their pain and um, then for to have someone there to pray for you and with you and with them, that's just awesome and God's mercy. So it's beautiful. Yeah. I just never thought, I mean, you just, you know, you never think you're going to go through something and it happens. And it's like, it, you know, I, I want God to turn this around and use it for his, his good. And I, and I know that, you know, there's just so many people out there that, you know, they, they don't know how to, you know, reach out. And, um, and they think that, you know, just, you know, Christians are, you know, are goody goody, and they just don't go through nothing. Well, that's <laughs> that's <Ooh>. inaccurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you know. that's a not exactly. <laughs> We're about to finish up with live stream, but we will be going into archive. So keep talking, girls. I just mm-hmm. didn't want you to panic listening to that blog talk lady say sixty minutes. Well, I not. mean, sixty seconds. Can you hear no, her? No, it's just that. No, not yet. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, it's not just like somebody standing in front of you on the TV with these pearly white teeth and, oh, well, you can have an abundant life, too, and everything's just honky-dory, and it, and it just isn't, you know. Mm. It depends on which way you look at abundance. <laughs> yeah. Well, the dark this particular the time, person is the looking more, at abundance the, more... the way we should look. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the darker the time, the closer the Lord is. It's absolutely precious. You can't see the light unless you're in darkness. And that's when you see the light most. Understood. And I still think I still think, Ross, that you're gonna be able to help my daughter T N, you know, mm. with her situation. She is still grieving. Um, that's why I haven't had her on. Um it's mm. it's not something that you just like you know a year goes by or you you know another year goes by it's just you know it, it's it's hard and I wasn't getting on yes, it is. I wasn't trying to get that word abundance screwed up what I meant was you mm. know somebody standing there you know with these pearly white teeth and this really nice suit saying oh the Lord yeah. wants you to have an abundant life well you know that's just mm-hmm. not reality. You know, there's really, you know, and then they just think, well, okay, is everyone's life like that as a Christian or what? You know, and that just ruins it. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, they make you wonder. They make you wonder what you've done wrong when when you when you're going through rough times. Exactly, Mm. and and it's not like that. So, I mean, you know, it's I've you know talked through a lot of people throughout, you know, having my own show and doing stuff and. You know, just so many people just, hey, you know what? I used to struggle with that, too. And it's so awesome that, you know, somebody come out and called the elephant out in the middle of the room. And I'm one for doing that. So it's like, and I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I just think it's, I, I just want people to know that, you know, there is help out there. And, you know, we're, I know Dorothy has a, a an email uh, to contact, you know, any of us, you know, if anybody out there needs help and, you know, we're just not, we're just regular people with, with, with issues, you know, that we've had to deal with. And so oh, yeah. we just, you know, spill over and maybe it was meant to come out. I was supposed to, I was supposed to cry and just let it out. I mean, I feel safe here. So, <laughs> But I get all excited listening to I read Pam. I listen, I talk to Pam every day. 
but her dogs, <laughs> each one have their own personalities, and it's just wow. <laughs> have you noticed the quiet? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, what did you do to those poor puppies? <laughs> I put my headphones on. <laughs> they used to be talking to themselves. <laughs> They're all asleep. I don't. I don't come down to this on the morning because Buster's loudest and he sets the others off. And I come in and I think, oh, it's like walking into a nursery. <laughs> I absolutely adore them. Thank you. But, Thank yeah. you, Lord. Thank you for Thank you. understanding. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Oh, Father, we just praise you and thank your holy name. We just give you thanks, Father, for the, you're the one that's the strength in our life. You're the one that's the power in our life. You're the one that lifts us up. You're the one that keeps us going. You're the one that gives us hope. You're our rock that we can stand on, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that you called us to yourself, that you brought us out of the darkness and you brought us into this, into this place, Lord, where we can find hope and, and, and help in, and mercy in times of need. That, Lord, you called us and you called us to know you and to spend time with you. You've given us hope, as you promised in Jeremiah, Lord, that you've, you've not... You've come to give us hope in a future. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your heart is also broken for those who are struggling and those without hope, that they would call upon you. Father, we just ask that you remove the scales from their eyes that they might see. We can't do that, Lord, but you tell us in your word to to ask you to remove the scales from their eyes that they might see the truth, that they might that they might see Jesus. And Father, I just pray for that listener, Father, that Lord, when they call upon Jesus, they call upon you in Jesus' name, that Lord, you will hear them and answer them and then pour your peace upon them, Lord, that they might know your peace in abundance, that they might know you personally. Lord, when we look to men, when we look any other way, Lord, we will never find peace. But when we look upon the face of Jesus, when we look upon your face, Father, we are, we, we are guaranteed to find peace. We're guaranteed, guaranteed to find that place where we belong, Lord. Just praise you, Father, and give you thanks, Father, for what you're doing in this earth right now. And we just ask, Father, that you will raise up your people and that you will grant divine connections, Father, For us all, Lord, that that dot of light, that spark of of life, Lord, will connect one to another and join up until there's a a fire blazing, Lord, to drive back the darkness from our nations, Father. That, Lord, we might rise up with a cry and join in with the angels, Father. And that, Lord, you will send your, your warring angels, Lord, to help us, Lord, to surround us, Lord, against all that the enemy would throw against us, Father, that, that, that would bring confusion, that would bring diversion, that would set one against another, Lord, one, bre- one brother against another and a sister against another sister, that, Father, you will actually stop that, Father, and that, Lord, that you'll help us and cause our ears to be sensitive to hear your voice and to know that great loving heart of yours, Father. Because, Lord, there is no love on this earth except yours. There's none like it, Father. And, Lord, we've got a hope. We've got a hope that goes beyond this life, beyond this planet, that, Lord, one day we'll see you face to face and we will be standing with the angels rejoicing in you, Lord, for what you've made available for us. That, that, that the fallen one in, in Eden, Lord, took away from, from man, that, Lord, you come back and that you've made available for us again. Oh, just we just praise you, Lord. We may be stuck down here for now, Lord, but we are seated in heavenly places with you and we can come to you confidently and openly, Lord, knowing that, Lord, you silence heaven when one 
voice, praise Lord, and you incline your ear, you bend down carefully to listen to that one voice. And that word, your, your word will never, ever return to you void, but it will perform where until you send it. It will bear fruit. We just praise you, Father, and we, we honor you, Lord. There is, there is no name under heaven by which men can be saved, and that's the name of Jesus. And we honor him, and we give you thanks, Holy Spirit, for your work in us and through us, for you're the one that help us. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Holy Spirit. Forgive us, Jesus, that, Lord, we sometimes lose our way because, Lord, we are diverted to look elsewhere when we should be looking up, particularly at this time when we see all these things, to look up because our redemption draws nigh, that what we are seeing are just signposts along the way to you returning. Oh, remember those who have listened in, and remember those, Lord, who are listening to this program. Open their ears, Father, to hear, open their hearts to receive, and open their eyes to see, Father. Your glory, your glory, and what you've done for us, you will also do for them. All they have to do is ask, and it shall be given. We give you thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Father, I ask for a special blessing on us all. Excuse my coughing. A special blessing and a special leading and anointing when we go out to see what you see, to see the need, to be able to meet the needs that are out there. You know who they are. We don't know who they are. We can't tell by looking at their flesh. We need your eyes, your vision, to see the need. (coughs) And open their eyes when we meet the need to see that it is coming from you, not us. To give them hope in their hopeless situation. For you are the hope of the world. And we want to bring your kingdom to more people. Help us do that by letting us know what we need to do when we need to do it. Don't let us get so carried away with doing our chores and doing our grocery shopping that we cannot see other people. And I ask that you bind bind the evil spirits behind their situations because we know they're there, those little hooligans, chomping and gnashing. So bind them, Father, so that they can hear you and loose your ministering angels to surround them with love and acceptance and forgiveness. And Father, I ask that you bless our governmental leaders, even the misbehaving ones. You know who they are. Show your glory to them, Father, to bring those misbehaving ones into your alignment so that they can govern as they were supposed to do. Strip them naked of all their carnal ideas and find those demons as well that are whispering in their ears of how they can get rich and keep power and manipulate people. Set them straight. That is not the way it works. It is your way or the highway. And bless Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Surround them with the warring angels. And I declare and decree that no weapon formed against this administration shall prosper in any way. That anything they throw against this administration comes back on them so that they can see you. And I thank you so much for giving us a Cyrus, for giving us someone who listens to you and follows your lead. That is a tremendous answer to prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Your turn, Sally. <laughs> Father, I, we thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for being a um, almighty God, an international God, a God of all um, all peace, all strength, God, a God of all power. Thank you, Father. We thank you, God, for being a merciful God, a comforter, a God who knows and cares about our our issues, Father, that we have not mm-hmm. a high priest who cannot sympathize with our infirmities. We thank you, Jesus, for knowing us and for interceding for us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for living in us, guiding us, directing us, mm-hmm. instructing us, making us sensitive to the voice of the Father. We thank you. Mm-hmm. Because you are so amazing, God. You are so amazing. Amen. That you would call us your children, that you would let us know your mind, that you would even allow us to have your mind, that we would have the mind of Christ. We exchange our worries, our fears, Lord, for your confidence and for your assurance. We thank you, Lord God, that we give you our sorrows. And we exchange yeah. our mourning for dancing. Amen. God, I pray mm-hmm. against the spirit of grief in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I pray yeah. against the spirit, Lord God, that imprisons people in their past, Father. Yes. I pray, God, just even as you delivered me from a spirit of grief, God, that you would bring your peace, God, in the name of Jesus, your shalom on our mind, our emotions. Eradicate it in the name of Jesus. Eradicate yes, the hurt. Take it away, Father. Grab yes, it. That pseudo um, hurt, that hurt that the enemy keeps bringing up, where he yeah. wants to destroy our lives and keep us in circles, mm. Father, where we're not progressing. Father, I pray that you, the comfort of the Holy Spirit will come and minister that you would even allow them to lie down in their sleep to be sweet, that they would wake up and that they would have, um, Lord God, that you would make a table before them in the presence of their enemies where where they used to be, Lord God, wherever the situation is, as as Roz was speaking about, the, the prostitutes or the drug addicts or those who have experienced loss or suicide, Father God, I pray, Father God, that that those things that were their enemies, Father, that you would make them have peace and a table before the their, the presence of their enemies, Father. That you would allow people who who are experiencing those things to see them at their best, Father, at a place of calm, yes. at a place of victory. In the name of Jesus, we thank yes. you, Lord that you are rising up godly men, Father, godly people, just like Daniel, to be in government. Mm-hmm. We thank you, Lord, even as Pam prayed for her, their government. And internationally, Lord God, we mm-hmm. thank you, God, that you have connected, Lord God, um, the, made, made the mouths as if they were nothing just by the technology And we thank you that your Holy Spirit is timeless, that your Holy Mm -hmm. Spirit, that your power can reach and that you're omnipresent and omniscient and all-knowing and all-powerful. And so we ask, Lord God, that you would give instruction to the leaders, Lord, our governmental leaders. Give instruction to those who are connected to them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray for in regards to what Pam said, the distractions, Father, the distractions of racism, the distractions, Lord God, of sexism, Lord God, the distractions, Lord God, of what can kill us and what might kill us and what foods might be (laughs) contaminated, Father God, whatever (laughs) distractions the enemies might be throwing against us, whatever things that, Lord God, the, the affections of this world, Father, God, draw us back to you, Father, even in prayer the other week as I was 
getting caught up in my emotions, you kept saying, don't get distracted. Focus on me. Mm -hmm. Don't get distracted. Worship me. And, God, we worship you. We focus on you because we know that your paradigm is greater than ours, God. What you see Mm -hmm. is greater than what we can see. You can see into the future and you see into the past, and you know how to make it all come together. And, God, we ask that you would give us wisdom how to pray what you Mm -hmm. would say, Father. God, word our mouths, Father. And I even pray, Lord, for those who are being sex trafficked, Lord God, and the children, Lord God. And, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you would protect the children. Put your hands of protection around them. Put your hands of protection around that woman. Whisper in her ear, God. Direct her, Lord. Help her not to go in that path, Lord God that would cause her down that street, Lord God, or drive down that road or or be at that Mm. store at that time, Lord God, where she may be abducted, Father. Whisper in her ear, Father, in the name of Jesus. Speak to the parents, Lord God. Your word said that that our children shall be taught of the Lord and grace shall be their peace, Father. I pray, Father God, that the parents will begin asking you to instruct their children in math and science and in in, in the ways of life, Father God, in the name of Jesus, make our children's ears receptive to your word, God. Make our, make our ears, God, like children's ears, God, to where we don't think we know everything, God, but that we would be attentive and listen to you, Father. Lord God, we need instruction, God. And you said that if we acknowledge you in all our ways, that you shall direct our path. And when we think That's we right. know it, God, Humble us, God. Help us to humble ourselves before you, Lord God, and that you would give us direction, Father. Help us to realize when we're leaning to our own understanding. In the name of Mm. Jesus, Father God, I pray against the spirit of guilt, Father, the emotion of guilt, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the emotion of condemnation, for there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For, God, you have set us free from the law of sin and death. We thank you, God, for your love that surpasses all understanding. We thank you that nothing can separate us from your love. Help us to experience your love even more. In the name of Jesus, I pray for Pam's children, grandchildren, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I pray, God, your peace. I pray that you erase the memory, Lord God. Emotion of the memories of the emotions, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that even for Lord God, Raj, Father. Raise the memory of the emotions, Lord. Heal the memory of the emotions in the name of Jesus. Even if she might have a memory of the person, wipe it away, Father. In the name of Jesus, wipe away the hurt, wipe away the pain, Father. God, we yes, thank Lord. you for giving us a new mind, transforming the mind, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank mm. you that all things become new with you, Father. Father God, we yes. thank you for Dorothy being an intercessor. We thank you for Dorothy being a media- mediator. We thank you, Lord God, for, for her connection that is connecting yes. many people and drawing people to Christ, Father. God, I yes, pray Lord. a special blessing up on her and up on her daughter in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would comfort her heart, Father. Comfort her heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus, from the passing, Lord God, of her child, Father. In the name of Jesus, give her a desire to live daily. In the name of Jesus, God, we speak life where death is trying to consume. We speak the life of Christ. We speak the life of Christ, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God. God, wrap her in your arms, God, even as you say in Psalm 18 and Psalm 17 that we are the apple of your eyes, and God, hide Mm. us under the shadow of your wing. Lord, let that person know that you care about them. Manifest yourself in a way to Dorothy's (laughs) daughter that she needs you to manifest yourself, the places that she's questioning you, the places where she's mm. wondering about your intervention, minister to her, God. Speak to her in ways that only you can, Father. Give her rest and mm. peace. God, we, t- we, we ask that you would erase the thought and the memory 
anything, the things that we've seen that were traumatic in our lives that keep haunting us. And we ask for your peace, Lord. We ask for um, a mind transfer, Lord, a mind transplant, a heart transplant. Give us the heart, your heart, Father, in the name of Jesus. Give us your peace. Give us, Lord God, Mm. them and those that are hearing and those that may hear your 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 Shekinah glory, your your anointing, God, that destroys every yoke. Break the chain of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we thank you. And I thank you for this opportunity to connect me with such amazing women. And I ask, Lord God, that even as Roz has been petitioning you for direction and purpose and um, clarity about her ministry, God, I thank you for opening up more doors, Lord God, more doors for her, Father. And we come against the spirit of inadequacy because we can do all things for you that strengthens us, God. We do not put any confidence in the flesh, but we walk in the spirit. And even as I pray this, I thank you for your Holy Spirit speaking to me, that I put no confidence in the flesh, that I put all of my confidence in you, because we trust you, Father. We depend on your strength, and your strength is made perfect in our weakness, in our frailties, Mm -hmm. in our being crybabies, Lord. That's me. I'm crying, even as I'm praying, God. But I thank you, God, that throughout all generations that You have made yourself known to us, and you keep making yourself known to us. Yeah. And you keep revealing yourself and loving us, Lord. We thank you, God, that we will have a greater revelation of you. Open up our eyes that we may see. Open up our ears that we may hear. Open up our hearts (laughs) that we may receive. Take any rebelliousness away from us, Lord, anything that's contrary to you, Father. And I pray for the country where we've idolized people, we've idolized other things, and we've put other gods before you. I ask that you would eradicate all gods, any gods that may be in our lives, anything that we've exalted above you. And we ask that you would help us to take every thought captive and those things in our lives that we've put before you. We ask God, I ask personally, God, that you would help me to make more time for prayer, more time for pursuing you, that I choose to make it, Lord. Give me a heart. Give us a heart, a hungering for you, God, that we may be filled. And we thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Sorry for praying so long. Amen. (laughs) That was good. And just to confirm that that was a spirit-led prayer. Um, Amen. When you were praying about my daughter, um, she has been talking about wanting to be with her son who suicided. So mm-hmm. we're spot on. Father gave you insight into that. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. 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 And that's the first time I've spoken that out loud. I didn't want to acknowledge that thought. And we continue to pray, and you all can bind and loose. You know, there's a spirit of grief after I went through my miscarriage, Mm -hmm. a miscarriage that I had five years ago, I believe. It's almost five years Mm ago. Um, But other people were experiencing various deaths, you know, and there were suicides and what have you going on, too. But there were different people that were losing family members. And all of a sudden, as I was going through that time, initially, when I was focused on God, when I was just focused on God, there is a peace of God that surpasses all understanding, really. You don't react the way that people would normally react, you know? Mm -hmm. And people are looking at you like, oh, you're crazy, you know, you're just so peaceful, what have you. But then when you begin reacting the way people expect you to act because you're not reacting the way, you know, you're reacting in a peace of God. <laughs> and um, 
so I began reacting in that way, but I got lost in that. And as I was mm-hmm. lost in it, my husband was praying for me, and family members were praying also, and there would be times where I experienced depression. But um, God made me sober enough to see that other people were being bad at a spirit of grief. And he said, this isn't normal. This isn't, you know, they say there's a process. There is a process of grief. I'm not negating mm-hmm. that. That's right. But then there is a spirit of grief. You know, just like there, the scripture says, yes, that's God right. has not given us a spirit of fear. There is a spirit of grief that will keep that's you in right. a place that God never intended for you to stay. And then Amen. there is a spirit of guilt that accompanies grief. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then Amen. there's the fear, the spirit of fear that goes with that. So it's all combined together. So then the fear of, I can't be happy because if I'm happy, then people would think I'm not grieving this person or mourning this person. And so it's just a, a cycle. There's a whole bunch of yeah. connections with all of that. I mean, at different levels and de- dependent on what a per- how a person normally would have gone through, you know, grief or depression when they were um, walking in the flesh and not in the spirit or not a believer. And so God made me aware of a spirit of grief. And um, this year, he told me to pray. Um, I had started coming out of it and what have you, but I would grab hold to other people's grief and would grieve with them. <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, yeah, and had lost friends of uh, friends from cancer and start questioning God and what have you. Then the Lord told me this year. He said, "Pray the prayer of a realignment that you that I would realign." would be realigned with God's heart, that I would be realigned with God's destiny for my mm-hmm. life. I was grieving over opportunities missed. I mean, when the spirit of grief come up on you, just you just take everything. <laughs> just, you grieve everything. Everything is, mm-hmm. I regret this, I regret that. And the Holy Spirit said, no more regret. Old things are passed away. I'm going to remove it. And, I mean, when God did it and I began praying, I said, I started looking up prayers trying to pray, find a prayer of realignment. There, I couldn't find one. But God basically said, just ask me <laughs> to align <laughs> you with, you know, my purpose and align you with my your destiny that I have for you. And I began praying yes, that, and I'm telling you, and I began relinquishing the various things that he brought up. Every time he brought up something, I said, God, I give it to you. I give you this, this um the permission to feel like this. I give you this thought that I'm inadequate. I give you this, you know, I give you this fear. This is, and began, God began showing me how fear had manifested itself through all, all, of my, all of my life. And so he began just opening my eyes, and it was just amazing to me. And so um, one thing I've learned is that many a times we're trying to figure out how to do it and what steps to go through. But when God does it, we don't have to do anything. We just give it to him and relinquish it. And it's not Amen. and it's not to say that we haven't relinquished it before, but am I relinquishing it today? You know, give us today our daily bread. God, I give you this because you've given me your word and your word is saying to cast all my cares upon you because you care for me. So today I relinquish Amen. it. And so there's a Amen. time where he just all of a sudden just, it's, you know, there might be a vague memory of it or no memory, but and the Lord told mm-hmm. me one time to pray against the memory of the emotions because your emotions have a memory, and I didn't know that until mm-hmm. I started listening to Caroline Leaf and various other believers that, that were teachers and neuroscientists and what have you, that your, your mind, there are strongholds that are created in your mind that's used to going around certain loops and so certain processes of thinking. And God began showing me through them, and he was just like, pray that the memory of your emotions are erased. You might remember Mm. the incident. You might remember what happened, but there is no emotion connected to it, you know. Mm. And he's done that multiple times in my life, but just in a different way this year, too, he's done that in several different things. And I'm just like, God, erase the memory of that emotion, you know, erase the memory. I know I shouldn't. I don't feel like this. So, God, if the enemy's causing me to feel like this, 
or if this is what I'm feeling at this moment, I know this doesn't align up with your word, and I don't want to feel like that anymore. So help me. Release me from it. And he will release you to the point where you don't react to it anymore like that or you're able to acknowledge the moment or acknowledge the passing or acknowledge the situation or acknowledge the the opportunity miss, but you don't have the emotion tied to it that keeps you going in circles. You know, me talking That's right. about yeah. it. But um God is he's just amazing mm. how he just he's He's just so supernatural and amazing. He just really wants yeah. his people to be healed and to know him in a way that that he is the great physician. Mm-hmm. God yeah. that, that not only heals our body, but he knows how to get on the inside and heal our hearts yeah. and our emotions and that soulish yeah. part of us that man can't even touch or, you know, yeah. he's just amazing. Let's well, say amen to that. Yeah, I just, um, I love the way he does that, too. And uh, it when he does that for us, it's not just a blessing for us, but it loosens us up, emotionally speaking, to minister to other people. Because when we're so mm-hmm. self-absorbed in that pain, that's all we see, that's all we feel, and that's all we hear in our mm-hmm. heads. So when that's gone... Yeah we can reach out to other people. And so it's... Yeah. Yes, amen. And I have a question for you girls. In a miscarriage, because I had a miscarriage too, there is that, that hormonal thing where your body has been preparing for that child and then all of a sudden that child isn't there anymore and your body just goes wonky with the hormones. Mm-hmm. Does that happen to women mm-hmm. who have abortion as well? I wouldn't doubt it. I, w- I think that's worse. I think. I don't I know. I think it's, about, it's a lot worse because they're unprepared for what's going to come. Well, not in the in the judgment sense. I think physiologically, or the physical sense, if yes. a person, it depends. Yes. I guess on how far that person is along, you know, if they're going to mm. still experience those hormonal things. I know that um, I was about mm, almost three months or a little bit long, for, about three months. And so the blessing of that was is that I didn't have to um, give birth um, to a baby. Um, but I know multiple women that have been, have had to go through that. Um, giving birth to a stillborn or um, going through some type of miscarriage or abortion, late abortion, what have you. And their body is going through changes, and then all of a sudden it goes through some processes for a few weeks, and then it stops. And um, Mm -hmm. physiologically, um, emotionally, it would depend on that person. And then, to you know, maybe their spiritual, you know, connection, um, their support system, um, churches and friends and counseling or support systems. Um, and so it, it depends. And then it depends on, you know, um, that, that person's, um, how that person internalizes what happens, if they feel like it's their fault or if it's, you know, it's a whole lot of, I'm not a, I'm mm. not a psychologist, <laughs> but I know from just reading and listening and knowing people and talking to them. And when I went through the miscarriage and I went through, um, uh, I ended up finding out about various people in my life that that I was close to, you know, and didn't know their life story. They didn't, they hadn't shared it with anybody, but then they began sharing with me because I had gone through that experience. And so, and I'm learning also from people that had gone through abortions. I have, I haven't gone through abortions, but what God has shown me is that there are, there are, um, you know, we we talk about the the sin of abortion, but um, there's the the sin of denying God. Period. You know, and so that there is there is that sin. You know, there's a lot of people where James said, you know, you hate your brother, so you're killing him. So 
I, I say to my husband all the time, people harp on people that have abortions or girls that have abortion, but yet we're, tell, you know, scandalizing somebody or speaking wrongly about them and we're killing their reputation or we're speaking falsely against them. And, and Jesus said that we're doing the same thing. We're, we're killing somebody. <laughs> we're murdering mm-hmm. knowingly. Right, and because so, we're, we're muttering so, word curses. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. And so, mm. and so I always to feel me, bad for the mother. But not only the um, the mothers, but a, a friend of mine asked, uh, years ago, a guy asked me, a friend, he said, um, you know, you're so adamant and, you know, about the abortion aspect. He said, but what if the mother died while giving birth to that child, but she wasn't a believer? Or she, he said, what, and then he gave me another case scenario. What if the mother died and the child died and she didn't know the Lord? And then he said, so what would be more important to you? If, I mean, those are all, you know, extreme. We don't know that's speculative. But then he said, what if that lady lived, she went through the abortion, and God shows his mercy? And I know people that have had multiple abortions. But also I know people that God is using to prophesy into people's lives that have had abortions, and God has forgiven them just like he forgives us. And those people are being used greatly by God. And that was just a moment in their life where they chose death instead of life or they chose the way of the world instead of the way of God. But when God gave them hope and gave them direction or gave them purpose in their life, they began speaking life to people and they're sensitive. You know, I, I, like I said, I know several people and God used to connect me with people like, um, in, because I work at the college, um, I work at a university and God used to send students to me, young girls all the time that were contemplating it or had gone through it. Um, or friends, and I would think, why are you saying them to me? And he was just saying, my love is the same. He was just letting me know that you love a person through processes, and then when they can come to you after they've gone through the process, you know, I mean, many of you have encountered that, and they come back to you, and then they can talk to you um, or ask you to pray for them about something because they knew, know that the way that you responded wasn't in a in a judgmental way, you know, but yeah. in a, that's, in a way of love. To, mm. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you just said it. You know. I got you. <laughs> no, I heard you. Yeah. I just got it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you said it. You I really did. Yeah. You I think you'll find a, uh, the media uh, uh, is the biggest problem, giving the wrong oh. impression of what oh. believers uh, are reaching out the the the, the religious section mm. do come with that condemnation, but a believer doesn't because God yeah. won't allow it in no showing. What what when 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 it's believers that are, are trying to reach out, it's to let them know that they're loved, that the that, that yeah. you know that God loves them. Mm-hmm. But the media will have it that they're going out and condemning them, and it's got no to do with condemnation. It's got everything to do mm-hmm. with reaching out and saying, "Look, God loves you. God loves you." Mm-hmm. Whether they choose to go ahead or not, it won't change that fact. But God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Yeah. What was that? Uh, yeah, it's. Just- Oh, we had a motorcycle go by. I swear, every motorcycle in Connecticut drives by my house every day in the summer. It come at the right time, didn't uh, they? <laughs> yeah, did it come through your living room or what? Oh, wow. It sounds like it doesn't. And I don't have any windows open in here. I have the air conditioner on. And I, no, cause there I are times when I've yelled out the window. I've yelled. I said, they do make mufflers for motorcycles, you know. Yes, they do. I've seen them. But it's not cool. <laughs> and that's the side one screaming out the window. <laughs> that's that side lady. 
That was no Harley Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it wasn't a little, uh, no what do they call them, the ones that, the Japanese bikes that, that go, ying, 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 ying. Yamasashi. <laughs> the cats don't even lift their heads when those go by. <laughs> Air dryers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lawn mowers. Yeah. We call them all pets. Like that. <laughs> That's no Harley. <laughs> no, it went too noisy. Yes, Harleys have mufflers on them. Oh, the lovely. Uh oh, the lovely. I'm not a biker and I can't ride a bike, but I like them. <laughs> They're classy. I used, yeah, I used to ride when I was younger. Mm. One went through Bridlington and it got lights all over it and, and wheels and everything. I went, oh, wow. Gold coloured it was as well. <laughs> and, oh. I want to go on it because I don't like bikes. <laughs> but I like I like Harley Davidson. It sounds silly, I know, but <laughs> I'm a four wheel person. If I'm going to fall off, I'd rather have four wheels. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> Pam. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm still well, off the I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta go because I gotta get some sleep for work tomorrow morning. But I wanted to say that that I understood what she meant by emotional, um, uh, emotions attached with memories. Yeah. So I'm gonna pray against that, and I know Pam. You know, I'm, I've been thanking the Lord for delivering. You know. Because it was it was my spouse that it was my husband that that took his life. So I I thank him for delivering you know my son and I and you know out of that out of that mess. Mm. So I keep saying it, Pam. <laughs> Good gal. <laughs> so it's it's true saying. though. It's seems until you look back and you think you see the wisdom in it. Uh, I think it must have been 14 years that I grieved after my after my marriage breakdown. But it was more the, um, what did I do wrong? That's what I couldn't understand. And I never got an answer. And then one day the Lord says, it's time you stopped. It wasn't your fault. It's a problem he'd got. And once that hit hit home, then I were able to say, right, and move on. And then he showed me where I needed changes, you know. Sure. But I just wanted to know what I'd done wrong. Fourteen years I struggled with that, so I know what the struggles are like. Look at me now, and I see him, and I think, thank God I'm not married to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for that deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> last time, he, last time I saw him, he said something that was with me praying, Pam. <laughs> all right, all any closing thoughts? Yeah, let's do what. Let's do it with him. We're not all together. I think I like this. Mean, unless Go ahead. I'm going to say you can't walk with the Lord unless you walk in agreement. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. Right. You thought you'd lost me then, didn't you? <laughs> I did, I did. But I'm, I was going to say, I think I like this non-topical program better than the topicals. What yeah. do you think? <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that the Lord's led this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Lord let it. And and the prevailing focus was prayer. And then so many issues came. Well, a lot of things came out, but that the, so much came out. And just uh, it's amazing. And God delivering us, you know. Even he calls the, all things to work out together for your good. Yeah. 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 Yes. And so you all, you all are funny. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> That's the joy of the Lord is our strength. Sense of humor. Yeah. You have to have it. Yeah. 
Well, he's kept me awake tonight. <laughs> yeah, you don't sound sleepy at all. No, <laughs> it's nearly what three o'clock. It I'm wide awake. Nearly three o'clock. <laughs> I'm five hours ahead of Eastern Standard. Oh my God! Yep. Wow, that's a mm. sacrifice. <laughs> Yeah, yes, it is. Oh, well, he's used to me bending his ears at this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pam, God used you. I'm telling you, you changed the atmosphere. You changed the course. <laughs> Praise yes, God. You did, and I appreciate it. Yes. That's probably why he said look under the ear <laughs> for the headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow well, afternoon. Yep. <laughs> I'll let you know what happens. I'll keep you updated. Uh, oh, can you, oh, can yeah, you, uh, yeah. can you, uh, just like me, I forgot about uh, my niece got in touch with me today. Uh, a dad, a real dad, because my sister got married again, but a real dad, Dave, he, he was attacked this morning. He's a very poorly man. And he was assaulted this morning. They've had to put him in. Uh, he's in hospital, and they've had to put him in uh, uh, induced. Um, mm. <laughs> Louise put seduced, but an induced well, coma. Induced coma. Coma. Yeah. yeah. She, said, yeah. she said seduced, and it threw me. <laughs> but he's in an induced coma. But he is a very poorly man. But it, but Dave knows because uh, we took him to church once to fellowship. And he apologised in car. I mean, he, he was an alcoholic at the time. And he, he, he apologised to me. And he says, I'm sorry, Pam, I thought you were crazy and off your rocker, but I know that he's real because I felt love in that place. So he knows God. Wow. And I know that God touched him, even though he's in a coma. I know that, and I've told her, because he did that to me dad. So I'm just praying that the Lord, my prayer is that the Lord will touch him right where he is right now. Amen. But he is a holy man. I think he's, he's he's at the place of rock bottom, and him and Louise have only just um, got talking again because uh, a few years back he went for a wee bread knife and it terrified her. But they're all okay now. They're just getting just getting back together. Yeah. I mean, the Lord answered a lot of prayers for Louise, so she's. Believing God for him. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. we're down to nine minutes mm-hmm. on the screen, on the archiving, so we should probably say our goodbyes now. Okay. I'm thinking. Well, good night and God bless from the UK. Have a jolly good night. <laughs> You too, Pam. Thank you. Yes, you too. Well, watch me not be able to nod off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell Dad it's your fault. They kept me, kept me talking. <laughs> well, you ladies kept me on here when I said I was going to get off an hour ago, but I've enjoyed being on here today. So now I will, yeah. I will do the do my work while it is is night. <laughs> I'm going to do work tonight after I get over do the work of the Lord at work of my job. But I'm going to enjoy it and think about this conversation, this fellowship. And you, yeah. and you can listen to it again. And yeah. while I think on, has anybody seen the film The War Hall, The War Room? Yeah. Yeah. I have. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Very good. I'll have Good to check it out. So. <laughs> Brilliant. Mm-hmm. I, I'm think, I don't think YouTube. I've seen that one. But that's okay. I'll it look might, it up. It, it might be on YouTube, actually. Mm-hmm. I think okay. you have to pay for it, but it's worth it. Oh, yeah. I bought the DVD. Mm-hmm. And yeah. try and get Gods and Thrones by Carl Gallops. That is really an eye opener. God and called? Thrones. God yes, and, and Thrones. Nay Cash, Forgotten Prophecy and the Return of the Elohim. Carl Gallops. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. 
Yeah, those hooligans are definitely coming back. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're here. They're already yep. here. Yep. All right, ladies. Oh, yeah. So good night and God bless. Good night, everyone. Um, good night. Thank you so much for joining in on our little talk. <laughs> Judo pep oh, well, chat. I'll catch you later. Tell me who. Okay. Cheerio. Bye. Bye. bless. God I'm going to end the episode now. I'm going to push the big good red night. button. All right. Good night. God bless.